So, thank you for the prime sub, Oliver. Welcome to the Hippie Dippy Roundtable. This one was extremely difficult to uh, set up. Uh, we had some last second cancellations. We had a lot of last second uh, stops. Uh, this might be the last Hippie Dippy Roundtable. I'm considering uh, making this the last one, uh, as I have announced earlier today. Um, so just making that clear to everybody who is tuning in today, I'm not going to end the hippie to be championship that will still continue, but I am heavily considering ending it. Uh, it is just not worth the effort. Uh, I love the format. I love the, uh, the, the show. I love everything I do. I just hate the people. Uh, that is not a joke. That is unironic. I hate the people. I hate the people I work with. I hate the people I schedule. Uh, they're all uh, unprofessional. Well, not all of them. Some of them are fine. Uh, for all of the ones who's thinking, is it me? No, you're you're the good one. Trust me. Um, they're unprofessional. Uh, they're terrible to work with, and they can't schedule. So I'm heavily considering ending it because it's just becoming too much of an effort. Definitely after like this last one, where I'm like I nearly die of septic shock, and I need people to like kind of like bound a ship, and people cancel anyway, like last second, like that really ticked me off. So. I am heavily considering making this the last one. So enjoy it while you can, because it might be the last one. Uh, the Hippie Championship will continue because that's a huge like financial venture. And um, I really want to see that one continue. And we're still going to try the dating show, but I just wanted to make that clear that I do not know where the Hippie Championship is going to go from here and if it's going to continue. So I just want to make that clear for everybody. And Eris, your camera is not working. I can't see your, your VTuber setup. Oh, really? It's working nope. on my end. Is it working oh. for any, anyone else? No, it's blank. Nope. Okay, nope. let me try. You might want to try using Edge, like rather than like Chrome or something else. I'm using Opera. Okay. It's still not working? Nope. Okay. We can hear you. Uh, I think refreshing the page might work. Seems like a video source issue. Oh, there we go. You. There it goes. There we okay. go. Eris! Uh, Yay, great. Eris! Now, I'm going to ask people to do their best not to leave and come back uh, as much as possible because what it does is makes it so I have to rearrange everybody because I arrange people according to like political persuasion we'll on the talk screen. about that after so i'm going to uh, ask people devious. to do that as little as physically possible so the opposite of what's going on currently <laughs> i'd appreciate that and counterpoints being muted is wonderful uh i can't i i can't i cannot hear you no wonderful i've had you on how many shows and still technologically competent okay we're gonna go into this now <laughs> So this is the, I think, 30th recorded episode of the Hippie Dippy Roundtable that will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, we're going to cover a few topics, including Trump being permanently banned from Facebook, uh, India, and of course, hot tub streams, uh, all the intellectual topics today. So let me go off a few of the rules. Nothing TOS. You do anything for TOS, you're going to get clapped. Uh, there are a few banned words due to the fact that when these words are said, all that does uh, is destroys the, the show. Uh, it, it deviates the show. And Thank I mean this like mostly. You can't use these as insults. Uh, words like bitch, cunt, stuff of that uh, variety. Stuff that attacks usually character traits is, is usually how the rule goes. Um, like I, like unchangeable character traits. Like if, I, if, I, like if somebody came up to me and said, Dylan, you, you queer. Something like that is, is going to be banned on the show. Um, you do not talk over me when I am talking. When I am talking, I'm certainly trying to moderate. And I am also pretty sick. So I'd appreciate if people like did their best to uh, make my job easy today. And uh, I think that's everything, except everybody knows how the hand raising system works here, I assume. Can you just go over it? Okay. So if nobody, uh, if you are not able to get your way into a conversation, simply raise your hand and I will write your name down. And I will make sure eventually the topic gets over to you. But when you raise your hand, that doesn't mean you're next in line automatically. The conversation is still moving. I'll just make sure that eventually you get some time to talk. There'll also be opening and ending statements for every segment. Does everybody understand the rules? Yep. Okay. 100%. Is my volume too low? Is is that the problem? No, sir. 
Okay. I'm Dylan. I'm having. I can't really raise my hand, um, you know, due to some physical capabilities, but uh, I can react in like a confused emoji or something, and then you'll know. Um, sure. <laughs> uh, one okay? second. Love it. Uh, you, you can raise your hand in the whereby here, I think. Yeah. And Eris, I, I, I don't. Oh, okay. Your mouth isn't moving in the reg. Um. Yeah. I need a figure. Yeah. I'm trying to use different software, and it's kind of faulty right now. I okay. Apologize. See, this is why. VTubers, you know. No, god damn it. I'm sorry. See, I mean the V stands for very difficult, I think. So are yeah. we using are we using very challenged uh, whereby for the audio? I was Yeah, we're up. using whereby for the audio because Discord's breaking currently on all Eris, servers. Eris, the annoying oh. orange solved all of these problems with VTubers ten years ago. Okay. Listen, I'm not here so, for it. I'm standing up for the cartoons. Okay. Uh, I don't care about cartoon rights. We're not having that. Some SJW bullshit on today's show. Forever. So let's go into the first topic. The first topic is going to be Trump being permanently banned from Facebook. Facebook had like a little commission. You know, they had a little ruling. They had a little like council to discover how this is going to go. And it came out discovering, uh, saying that, hey, Trump's going to be permanently banned. We're not going to change our ruling. He will not be allowed back on the platform. So the question simply is, should it be a permanent ban or should Facebook let him back on. Simple question. I'm going to start in the top left-hand corner with Dr. Heemed, and I am again, again ask people to please uh, try to refrain as much as possible from leaving and rejoining the whereby as much as you can. Okay. You can start us off, where uh, Heemed. Hey, first of all, thank you for having me on, Dylan. I'm very glad to see that you're feeling better. Uh, I think I speak for everyone when I say I am the not. entire... Can I finish? I'm, I think I speak for everyone when I say we were all very worried about you, for real. Uh, so I'm really glad to see that you bounced back um, and welcome back. Now, on to the issue of the uh, of the Trump ban. I guess I, I don't really I have an issue I, with it. He's, so I, I would have more of an issue with it if he was uh, still a politician. But at this point, he's just a regular citizen. And um, these platforms are free to kick off anybody they want. I don't really see an issue with it. He obviously has shown that he has a pretty shitty track record set. when we'll it comes it. to yeah, it's just um, you know, TOS violations on Twitter. Uh, I'm sure, I, I don't have Facebook, so I didn't keep track of him over there. But I'm sure they, say they have a similar level of TOS uh, over there. So to me, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I, I, I honestly thought that... Twitter should have kicked him off even before he ever became president when he was starting to say the stupid shit about um, uh, about Obama, about the birth certificate. And I, I, I don't know. We can have a bigger discussion, I guess, about what it is like maybe at a certain threshold of followers. Um, you should have a different TOS uh, applied to you where you have like um, responsibility to uh, report or to tweet factual Maybe, <laughs> statements uh so yeah i guess i don't Dr. really have Reamed an issue left-leaning left-leaning capitalist okay next is going to be american nacho uh yeah so i'm i i'm not really pro uh the trump ban i even though agree with trump all the time like uh, i still think it's it's more healthy in general especially since these places have turned into like a, a town square so to speak I think it's more healthy that these people are allowed in these spaces unless they're literally calling for violence against somebody else. Like um, from like a business perspective, it, it, whatever, like they can kick off whoever they want. But unless there's some kind of like alternative uh, social media that everyone's allowed on and that nobody it doesn't matter what you're saying on there unless you're violating like the First Amendment that you're allowed to be on there. Um, until we have some kind of other option like that, or until we kind of maybe we need to look into like uh, rewording uh, uh, Section 230 or more strictly interpreting that, um, I think it's still more healthy, even if people are saying dumb shit, to have them on the platform where other people can critique them, can criticize them, uh, because when you ban people, it kind of turns them into like a martyr, and then it it can confirm what what are are more ignorant. Like, oh, that these things that they're saying are actually true, and that's why they got banned. They're saying this bullshit. So that's why I would be against that. So Okay. Next I'm gonna throw it over to Demon Mama. 
Yeah, um, as as far as I'm concerned, I have no real problem with them upholding a ban against Donald Trump. Um, I think that there are uh, lots and lots of questions that we can dive into about how we should handle free speech in the age of the Internet. But as it stands right now, it is well within their rights to do so. And I also think that it's an ethical decision. Um, Donald Trump engaged in incredibly irresponsible rhetoric from, um, you know, from a, a, a place where he, he explicitly uh, manipulated um, these platforms in order to further push misinformation. And we know we have a misinformation problem on the internet. To a certain degree, social media is still a bit of a frontier. We don't really know how um, the calculus all comes down to how quickly misinformation um, and, and being able to buy ads and stuff games the system and, and changes the way that we look at things. Um, and I don't think that the risk of, of like people becoming a quote unquote martyr um, is as big as some people make it out to be. Um, I do think there's some risk of it. Um, but in cases like this, Donald Trump has flagrantly broken every TOS on almost every social media site again and again. And if Facebook has decided that that's that their desire is to keep him off, I think that's probably going to be a net good for the world in in my opinion. Okay, next I'm gonna throw it over to shaved. Um, so ultimately I don't care that much because I'm not on Facebook. I hate Facebook. I think that they have an, a quite a lot, awful lot of horrible business practices on, um, they do. That they do. like developing these dependencies that other companies rely on. And then later on, like pull the rug out from under and they kind of go in and, and buy them up when they can no longer compete because they've That's taken true. away their dependencies. Um, for a long time, they've been an established market player that kind of sets the rules about um, more broadly um, yeah. across the market and kind of set some basic guideline principles for larger social networks, especially on enforcement. I don't know, Matt. Um, and from what I understand, initially it was like they had a private review board that said um, uh, you have to like give a more definite timeline within six months. Is that incorrect? Like later on, they're going to reevaluate this? Um, I, I'm I, at least that's what I'm pretty sure that I've read. And so, uh, Demon Mom is absolutely right. We're still like learning about online spaces, especially how to govern them. Um, Facebook is largely responding to a demand for increase in like public moderation and like review boards and like trying to establish a more clear guideline for what is and is not acceptable. Um, I don't like where they're going. Um, but like, think it's at least they're trying something. Um, Keep Trump banned if you want their private company. But if, if it like turns into some kind of public entity like some people are demanding, then you're then you're in a different ballgame. Okay. I'm gonna throw it over now to Aristocracy. Hey. Um I think honestly, like the stuff that Trump has been saying, I was shocked that he was in he was even allowed to say a tiny bit of what he ended up saying. I remember in the beginning of the camp, the 2016 campaign, he literally called for the assassination of Hillary Clinton and no one batted an eye. Um, and he just got away with that. Like, um, and I just don't, I don't even understand why it's even like, regardless of your personal opinion on free speech and stuff, like everyone knows that you shouldn't cry uh, fire in like a, in a theater and all that stuff. Um, so I, yeah, I don't even think this is like a free speech argument because even if the people I know who are free speech extremists, um, they would have said that the kind of things that he says should not be allowed. There just seems to be this double standard for Trump himself. Um, you know, people just don't treat the shit he says seriously, even though it causes actual consequences. And I just find that really strange. Um, and yeah, that's it. Okay. I'm going to throw it over to uh, CTV. Well, I suppose since no one else in the room is going to say it, I'm going to tell a whole bunch of a, a room full of grown people, right? That they need to start moderating their own content. Right. That's what needs to happen. Everybody else has called for Facebook to start doing mm -hmm. moderation is a bunch of bullshit. Right. The fact of the matter is yes, you're too fucking lazy to hit that block button whenever you see something that you don't like that you want to advocate that to the fucking the person that's setting up the platform. And then that way they get so held bad. potentially legally liable. Right. This is all that kind of bullshit. Right. That we're talking about when it comes to the censorship that's happening on the Internet. What we have to be able to do. 
is we have to be able to set up a framework where platforms can be established and they're not held legally liable for what third parties put on there as far as comments or whatever the case is, because they're not the uh, they're not the writer. Right. So so publisher platform. So they're not the, the person writing it. So that's where I know I lost it right there. I had it going good and I fucking lost it. Right. Fuck. Fuck. That's what happens. Right. I see that look, Maddie. I see you need, it. You hit I the block it. button. I seen it. I seen it. I seen it. Right. Okay. So f- moving on from here. Moving on from here. The rest of the conversation is going to be somehow centered around Trump, right? But ultimately, at the end of the whole conversation, it's going to come back to people being too fucking lazy to moderate their own fucking content. That's where it's going to be at, right? And they're wanting to kick that responsibility off somebody else. So remember that at the end of this, whenever I wrap it back up. I'll put a nice, neat little bow on it for everybody. Okay, I'm going to throw it over now to uh, Maddie. Yeah. So from a purely legal standpoint, Facebook is well within their rights to deplatform Donald Trump. Um, There's no question about it. Those um, claiming that it's a First Amendment issue are just factually inaccurate. Um, they are well within the rights to do so. From a moral and ethical standpoint, I also agree that it is the right thing to do. We have seen time and time again that deplatforming works when it comes to um, the proliferation and spreading of extremist ideas and misinformation. And um, since Donald Trump has been deplatformed, both on Twitter and Facebook, we've seen um, the amount of extremism that's being generated through those sites um steadily decline that's true also the the reality is that's you know okay. we can say know oh but p- people are responsible for their own words whatever but then true donald trump ago. should hold some responsibility for what his words led to which we saw come to fruition on january 6th this is a direct result of his rhetoric and this is him being held responsible for it. Um, and Shave Dog, you're absolutely right. Um, the Facebook board voted not to make the ban um, limitless, but essentially they're going to review again in six months um, for whether or not the ban is going to hold. I think all signs point to it holding, um, especially because Donald Trump shows no um, indication that he's going to temper any of his rhetoric and will be just as fantastical and absurd as always. So um, I think it's a good thing. And people, you know, saying, oh, well, it's Facebook's fault. Like Facebook should be allowed to. No, they don't have to friggin', they don't have to platform anyone. They're well within their rights. They're their own company. Okay. And we're going to wrap it up with counterpoints. Check. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. I mean, penis into the void for like 15 minutes. Thank you. Now my video will be demonetized. I appreciate it. Uh, well, that wasn't okay. intentional. Okay. Right, so, um, or, I definitely Mr. say Geek. a lot worse. I definitely say a lot worse things than the word penis. Like I don't know why. Great I'm... job, Marine. It's always right. one in the fucking crowd. All right. Anyway, so so moving on for. <laughs> um, all right. So for this subject, particularly, we're at a crossroads uh, conceptually, right. and the strongest right wing argument for uh, Donald Trump not being deplatformed idea of the commons okay but the idea of the commons i think opens up a whole pandora's box of issues that we would need to address if we were to take this line of argument uh one of them is the test uh, stochastic terrorism so if we had uh jihadist recruiters who said listen i'm not saying commit terrorist attacks but i am saying america is a unique evil um, that they're terrible, they're slaughtering uh, Muslims in the Middle East and North Africa, they're completely destroying us and they ha- happen- have to be stopped. But, uh, you know, jihadism is just a struggle and uh, I'm not advocating for terrorism, but I am saying that they're they're specifically evil. Um, if we had neo-Nazis saying, um, oh, well, you know, I'm not saying attack Jews, um, but I am saying that they're a unique evil who's trying to destroy the white race. Um, if, if like, And you can go down each extremist... Um, ideology hmm. and basically go right up to the verge of violence out really quickly. 
with certain public figures, some figures on YouTube. Uh, I think Tucker Carlson is an example that most lefties would call out as somebody who promotes the uh, stochastic terrorism narratives. Um, and if we had uh, social media unable to block any of these figures, then we would have to put that job up to law enforcement. We would probably have to put that job up to civil suits. That way, if terrorism, murders, injuries, harassment, was a was a stalking, was a doxing, if all of that occurred under this new Wild West free commons uh, definition of social media, then at that point, these people have to be held criminally and civilly yeah, liable for their thing. actions he, he on an individual basis because in order things. to prevent terrorist attacks or criminal behavior you're basically going to have to sue these people into the ground or throw them behind bars um so that's the strongest argument the public commons social media concept and those are my concerns with the public commons social media argument okay so um is that has everybody done their intros i just want to ask that quick yep okay then you may begin. Can I go in first? Okay. Um, so I, one thing I wanted to bring up um, to just tag, tag, tag on to my opening statement, and I'm wondering what everybody thinks about this. I think one of the biggest issues with Donald Trump's rhetoric was the coronavirus misinformation. In particular, as someone who is a scientist, I have a major issue with science misinformation. Yeah. And when someone has a platform the size of Donald Trump's platform or many, many other people, what they end up doing is they're basically doing scientific publications with their tweets. When they tweet out coronavirus is, is whatever, and it's not that dangerous, it's just a flu, they're literally doing scientific publication that has not gone through the rigors required for a scientific publication. I think that's one yeah, of the true, biggest problems that's what I, I have. Say. It's He's not like an opinion thing, like, oh, hey, uh, I mean, it's not that the Obama birth certificate stuff was okay or not disgusting but it's just that the effect of science misinformation is particularly harmful in the in the greater scale of things and we can see how that played out in america and um the other thing i wanted to say is uh so ctv you brought up about uh people are being are people are too lazy to moderate themselves and i completely agree i would say donald trump was way too lazy when it came to moderation and he was way too uh irresponsible so i, I if he was responsible with his platform 100 percent, fine have him he can have a different opinion it's his irresponsibility with the platform that that was a, that was the biggest uh problem and i think we are seeing him fade into obscurity imagine how much more of a platform or how much louder he would be post losing his job if he was still on Twitter, if he was still on these platforms. Instead, I saw a video of him from this weekend speaking at a at a wedding. Uh, he looked like a like a desperate wedding MC. Uh, so really we're, yeah, so we're clearly seeing that like these True. things actually yeah, do great. have like some him. sort of impact on the greater scale. I think what I'm seeing right now is a clear case of TDS coming to fruition. It's really beautiful, oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. But, to, but to but to answer you and as well as ask counterpoints a question at the same time right don't you think that it would be much better if the courts were the one that were actually holding people liable for the things that they say as actually per like the framework of our government right like if you go to the north carolina state constitution like it says that type. people are you listening right you're not listening whenever you're talking so if you go to the north carolina state constitution what you'll see is that in the constitution it says that the people will be held for the abuse of the freedom of speech right and the congress at the federal level can't make anything re with regard to that right so in this in this case whenever you start pushing the moderation of the content up towards the corporate level and in this case whenever the corporate oh, level has uh authority nationally would be uh, like the same correlative to the federal, right? What we really need is for people to be doing their own moderation, right? And if people do say things that are out of line, then they get held responsible in the courts, yeah, right? I, because ultimately what, that's what it. At the end of the day, that's what you want to have is like clear cut rules for like, hey, if you say these things and these types of things, then this thing's going to happen, right? And then that way it can be litigated. I, it can, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's simply that's why not this realistic. is a bad idea. Yeah, but, because I some would, people have seventy thousand yeah. tweets. Yeah, there's like the, <laughs> so, it, it, so it, you're asking for the government to step one, in. Uh, stop, one person at a time. Counter then Dima Mama. Okay. The very specific reason why this is a very bad idea uh, is because they, there is something, for instance, like uh, in the state of Florida, there, there's a statute about uh, telephone harassment. 
basically you can uh, call somebody in a harassing manner and it's actually a second degree or first degree misdemeanor. Um, that has been expanded by the courts to also mean threatening text quiet. messages. I can't help that. Um, so uh, if you basically expanded this to social media, uh, me calling you a scrotum and saying that you should like, you know, KYS or something like that could be taken as like a direct threat or uh, something that should get law enforcement up. involved because I'm sending you a direct message that is meant oh, to like shit. emotionally hurt you. Um, so if we were to expand right, this and then apply this. the laws that already exist for um, like Test. already exist okay, for be better. communication, then it opens up this there whole can go. of worms That's that I better. think is pretty brutal and gross where like you could be cross state lines, could be arrested uh, for basically sending an upset me upsetting message on Twitter. Um, and I think this is the exact kind of thing that we're trying to avoid is having men with guns showing up to your house to arrest you uh, for being an edgelord. Yeah, and that's exactly why, right? And in this case, when we're talking about a corporation like Twitter, or Facebook, you know, any of these platforms that you're talking about, right? This is where the individual needs to be moderating their own content, right? Because if the individual is doing that, that's how you ultimately remove any, you know, someone's, say, potential ability to sway others' opinions, right? And it happens at the individual level. No, and that's I, I disagree with what you. you want to have happen. I, I if somebody's that... voice just gets removed and then it's like, well, what happened to them? It's like, oh, well, then now they're the they're the victim automatically because they were removed from the platform for X number, whatever reason. And I, that I right don't there think... is exactly what you don't want to have happen because you don't want to have sympathizers that may be a little bit deeper into it to then only bedrock themselves, right? Okay, I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's like a couple of reasons with like with the, the the idea that like that like everything that happens on the internet is just like a that if you block them it just goes away is just like it's like a like a it's like a baby's worldview like it's like it's like object permanent it's like it's like what the fuck like when you if you go when you say something on the internet those ideas spread you might be able to individually block that person but you can't do jack shit about. Uh, a president literally spreading medical misinformation as Dr. Heemd brought up, which was something that I was really interested to, to, to talk about on here. Because um, if, if a president is pushing out m medical misinformation or any other type of dreadful misinformation, you could think of a million different types. Like, there is no risk to igniting your propane tanks um, by throwing them into the fire pit. You know that would be horrible. There's oh, you can imagine you a million different versions, but you don't even have to because he actually did it with COVID. And you can't. You might be able to push the block button, and you're like, yay! I don't have to see Donald Trump's tweets anymore. But his tweets went out to thousands of other people who then digest those points, and then you're suddenly living in a plagued wasteland where there's somewhere in the ballpark of six hundred thousand people dead, like we do right now. So when the example? problem the problem is though that that when you smash the bl the 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 ban button, uh, and and people are believing what he's saying you're galvanizing those people in their beliefs into what he's I, saying i disagree that's, with that's that claim i, I disagree with that claim i don't think that that's necessarily true you might be galvanized you might be though yes like, but wait, hold, hold on a second who's, who's hold, trying hold, to hold. be like somewhat anti-trump from the right side like as a republican who's trying to move the party in a positive direction uh -huh. in away from trump it makes it really fucking hard because people who who follow trump like religiously yeah, it. Yeah, um, but here's the problem yeah, with this that. Is where, the problem like, the with that is saying that you don't believe not, it doesn't change not, the fact not, that it is in hey, fact happening. Hey, please don't make me raise my voice tonight. Demon Mama, then CTV. Thank you. The problem that I have with that um, particular um, that particular claim is that like I I don't. Uh, there is some level of like galvanization of the individuals who have already bought into it, but the problem that we have is the misinformation perpetuating. And um, we have we've been able like a s simple analysis of 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 um, of like viewership statistics and of the actual reach of messages it has been done already. You can find this actively. If you want a, a great example of this, if you just want a case study that isn't Donald Trump, although the, Donald Trump has also been studied, is to go look at somebody like um, like uh, Milo. Yiannopoulos, somebody whose yes, platform who's been that. yeah deplatformed and he just objectively on every single measure is reaching less people now his most devoted followers are probably super on board but they were already super on board to begin with he's not putting out that harmful rhetoric to tons and tons of people and i agree that there's a couple of differences between their circumstance but the basic truth is that it actually does work to be to to 
press the ban button and say, okay, we need to stop the flow of this misinformation. And I think that is especially important when we're dealing with things like an insurrection or a pandemic or uh, information about how you can safely vote, which is another thing we haven't even touched on that Donald Trump used these co companies' platforms explicitly against their own rules to misinform people on how to participate in the democracy. That's so messed up. Yeah, so whether or not you believe that that galvanization is happening or not doesn't change the fact that it is, in fact, happening, right? You're being informed right now that it's happening. So if you, yeah, if you literally didn't listen to a that, single like, thing I said, did you? Oh, no, I listened to everything that you said, okay, and now so then I'm you're, then telling you're just, you. Then you weren't thinking. Right? The data that this the is, is use the, in fact, happening. The data like let's, that let's, let's, let, let's, let's let CTV finish this point, please. Right? So you just got told. Right by Nacho that it's happening. I'm telling you that it's happening. Now, now either everybody is fucking telling you that it's ever happening in the fucking world, right, is lying to you, or they're trying to just open your fucking eyes up to what does happen, well, okay. right? And you can We're... say one example as a fringe example, right? But in uh, in almost it happens. Okay. So this is what you need to wrap your head around, right? Thank You're being you. informed now that it sure. happens, Thank you. right? I'm the, glad. Just I'm glad. silencing of the voices doesn't actually help. Yes. Right. As a matter of fact, it drives the information further underground. If you need a more relevant example, take it the fucking look at the drug war. Right. As soon as you fucking made that shit illegal and you censored it and you banned it. Right. And you prohibited it. All you did was made the market go underground and the shit still happening. Those right. Are, those so are two completely if you different just things. Take, I don't know. One thing in life, what you know is fucked up. Right. And you go, oh, it's the same thing over okay. here. Maybe okay. these two ideas are kind of the same. I and you figure out how to fucking make them work. That's how you come to a common sense. Okay. Right type of ideology uh, thinking when it comes to understanding shit instead of just well this shit just doesn't happen and here's why so again I'll just point out you didn't listen to a single thing I said I never said that it wasn't happening at all I and I just told you okay. that I did all right all right listen I so know I know much right like much like I did, much like Abraham Simpson walking outside and shaking his fist at an angry cloud, it is possible for any angry old person on any platform to say whatever they want, and that doesn't make it true. That said, I do agree to a certain degree that there is some galvanization, and if you hadn't turned off your brain halfway through my sentences before, you would have actually heard that I addressed that directly in saying that even if the existing believers are galvanized, they stop gathering new ones, and that's what we are most concerned about. Also, you're you, Alec... Yeah, I'm like, not look, done. I'm not done. You that. just... You look, went off on listening. a huge ramble. You're not I'm, listening. It's All you my do turn, do CTV. It's my turn. Blah, 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 I know. Blah, blah. I know. You don't have an actual we're putting point. A pause. <laughs> we're putting a pause on this. We're just going to sit here for about 20 seconds, okay? Nobody's going to say anything. Um, I didn't ask for any ohms. Sorry. Okay. So I have a list here. And now we're going to move on to Maddie, then Counter, then Heem. We're going to do that. I and then to finish my we'll point. Circle though. back to this interaction. Okay. Heem. I mean, Maddie, you're first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um,. So here's the reality, CTV. I know that you're saying this is happening, this is happening. You hear me saying it's happening. You hear American Nacho saying it's happening. The reality is this, the data completely contradicts what you are saying. In fact, that be, the reason that you see a lot of these ideas less uh, proliferating uh, less frequently than they were only a few months ago is directly correlated to Trump not having access to platforms like Facebook and Twitter. And that can be measured like this is something that's easily measurable because these platforms can measure just how many posts are going out about certain topics or how, you know, certain conspiracy theories are being circulated. They can measure this with data and the data says that these ideas are being are going out at a lower frequency than they were when Trump was the main um, centerpiece, like proliferating them. So this isn't like, oh, but my feelings say that this is happening because you know what? You're right. There are still people out there that are circulating these conspiracy theories that are essentially acting like a blowhorn for Trump. But the, the fact is that it's happening not as often 
specifically because Trump is not on those platforms. And that is because deplatforming works and the data backs that up. So I just want to like make sure that we're grounding our arguments in reality and the reality, especially with how we measure um, how messages across social media circulate shows that him not being on social media has directly resulted in fewer COVID conspiracy theories circulating, um, fewer conspiracy theories circulating about voting, about the 2020 election. Like, there, that's a direct result of his deplatforming. Actually, you're, all, you're wrong on all counts, right? Just like I'll the send drug you the war, data. since the drug war, right, was in fact wrong on all counts as well, right? Everything that you just said, right? What are you basing that on? What data set are you looking at? Everything that you just said, right, it was what said about the drug war, right? It's like, look, look at all the positive effects that we're having. Look, if the drug war would have worked... Right, we wouldn't see know. all the problems that we have today. The drug war doesn't guess make what? any sense. All it did was send it underground, just like it does anything else. Whenever you censor it and send it underground, it doesn't CTV. actually it's fix the problem. Works. It just means that you're not looking. Drugs in the can area be consumed. Can actually, at it's still can fucking there. No, Vosh shouldn't do anything. Can I ask you a question? So okay, I know no. this is what you feel is happening. You say you see this happening, and you're attributing that to a larger trend. It's okay, Razzle. It always happens. Where are you? getting that I know he result, is. He's too stupid that to outcome think. from if that is what you believe is this happening, is the last this might like, be the last your belief w. is one thing but like what oh, is I the agree, evidence Zazzle. like what data set is showing that these ideas are just as more frequently prolifer uh, proliferated as they were when trump was on the platform how can you we'll talk about sit it more there after. saying that when there's no actual source of evidence or data set that backs that up because in fact it backs up the complete opposite yeah, I think you'd probably have to do more of like a study of history, right? And then like human behavior in order to understand exactly what we're talking about here, right? It's not one of those like human behavior can be measured by these data points. Not, That's exactly not every what I'm single doing. bit. Okay, but has it been data... measured for the last thousand fucking years? No, it hasn't. Ma Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. So you don't hold have on. Wait, wait, CTV, hold on. To CTV. See these things over time. So this is where your data, right, only supports whatever it is, this very specific thing that you wanted to support, just like they did with the fucking drug war, right? Mm -hmm. It's no fucking different. It's the same shit. You put a different fucking title on it, and, and they, they fucking package it up and ship it on down the fucking road. They say, hey, we're having a positive impact, when in fact all you're doing is censoring the fucking people, right, and keeping them from enjoying the freedoms that they should be able to enjoy at a national fucking level, right? If you want to hold somebody responsible for the freedom of speech Jesus. inside their state, then fucking do that because that's where the Constitution allows you to do so it. So I live in Otherwise, California. Why do I your own fucking content by hitting the block button? Uh, so Matt I live Maddie. in California. Facebook um, is based in California. You're saying at the state level. So if like Facebook as a California company wanted to ban Twitch because of the state laws in California, that'd be fine. Go for it. Well, um, you know, there's something I, I really wanted to ask you. Go here, for Maddie. it. No, I'm being fucking Maddie, serious right Maddie, wait, 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 I had a serious question for Maddie. Yeah, Maddie. Mama, what's that? Yeah. And you're Maddie. absolutely fucking right. Yeah. Would. Can I ask the a question quick question of this? Was answered. Okay, so Demon Mama. Yeah, listen, Maddie. Quickly, listen. Then we're gonna go to counter, and then Heem. You've got all this data and solid arguments, but have you considered that CTV's feelings disagree with that? I really think that you're overlooking a very serious angle of this here. Okay. <laughs> You're right. So, I did not consider feelings. That is was that why mistake. you put your hand up? You put your hand up to say that, Demon Mama? <laughs> Worth it. Throw it over. Worth it. Okay. We're throwing it over the counter. You're welcome. Right. You're welcome. Did something happen there? So okay, so so this is this exactly. is the pragmatic this is the pragmatic question we have to ask ourselves because he mad. I, He's real I mad. hear what CTV is saying, and I think it's a logical extension of the public commons argument, which is basically that uh, the these uh, platforms are just platforms. They're not publishers. They're not responsible for the content that they throw out. Therefore, people, unless they're actually Hamed. committing crime, should be given In uh, fact, I have a bonus for you all later. to say whatever they want as long as they're not actively committing crimes. What I am saying, though, is that there are a whole host of people who are committing crimes right now. Uh, if you were to extrapolate this to, uh, again, like s cell phones, he's real mad. Telephones, he's very grumpy. written letters, anything like that. Yeah, it might and be that these comic crimes I got a are often taken quite seriously. So if you were actually threatening somebody with violence in an online communication, um, if you were to do that in person, or if you were to do that by mail, or if you were to do that by telephone, these things would be either considered aggravated, uh, they would be considered assault, aggravated assault, or stalking, 
which are all crimes that are extremely, uh, extremely severely punished in our society. So if we were to go with the CTV route, which is basically like we should let the legal system handle that, um, that's OK. Like, that's OK. I understand it. But what we're actually talking about is like uh, Scooter, Scooter Punani 42069 <laughs> being visited by law enforcement. <laughs> Uh, for telling, uh, you know, somebody who lives in, like, he's in, you know, uh, the panhandle, and he threatens Scooter somebody in California <laughs> saying, like, hey, um, when you go to sleep tonight, I'm going to fuck your mom, and I'm going to scoop out your eyeballs with an ice cream scoop. And then police officers are going to show up to his house and charge him for basically what amounts it. to love it. assault or stalking. Thank you, Azazel Bedazzle. If somebody, if somebody gets you. blocked um and they move around that like and they basically create an alt profile uh, like okay nacho i think nacho said good i just don't like yeah, good. The fucking fucking outstanding be in jail including everybody on this fucking panel what are we talking I'm not, about look, i'm not the asshole I don't think all the to what go do sit and fucking shit to people right yeah. i don't do that so i got no fucking problem with anybody else that exactly do that shit she was talking possible. crazy well, shit about my mom last week so i mean like, I, there's no. also another okay. there's also a pragmatic problem here which is that um as it currently stands uh trying to make uh, bring moderation of every single public forum under the direction of the existing federal government is like the most ridiculously big government move I can possibly imagine. It would be tantamount to uh, nationalization of the social media industry. Um, but I assume, yeah, you know, so I'm trying. So wait, wait, well, that or well, well, hold on. I'm trying to put. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to put together. Um, you know what? What the argument from the right side of the panel, with the exception of counterpoint to. Yeah, what like what like I'm trying to put it together because like if you don't support nationalization, but you want the government to have to be responsible for legally moderating every comment on social media, like what are you asking for? Like it doesn't even make sense. It's even sillier than the idea of nationalization, which I don't necessarily I don't really think that nationalizing social media is the right answer. Um, but like even if you were to do that, that would at least mean that like if you nationalized it, you would be taking over the companies that exist and using their infrastructure for moderation, but just controlled by the government. But the way you're proposing it is like we need to create an internet police department that would be so big that they would have to go through dms of thousands of thousands of spam bot accounts and porn bot accounts it's absolutely ridiculous it, it wouldn't even get to that people would just up and leave people would just they go host their that. servers uh, actually, that, but either, but all, that wouldn't yeah. happen at all right now because if the say the federal government did nationalize all these major platforms the first amendment what would guarantee that Congress would not be able to pass any type of legislation with regard to moderation because it would be at the federal level. So then the moderation would all, Oh, no, so so what accurate. we would get is that can't pass a law. Okay. What you are advocating for is detonating okay. all social media I mean, overnight. That's what you're advocating for. Okay, Let's do it. demon okay. demon right. mama had a five second <laughs> comment <laughs> at the end of my speech. Can I have a five second comment? Sure, and then we gotta go to Heemed. Daddy, I know you are Scooter Pooter for 2069, okay? I know that's you. Stop threatening my mother. Okay, so I'm going to throw it over to Heemed, and I need to step away for a second because I need to take a pill or something, okay? So, Heemed, can you just, just please, yeah, everybody, yeah, I'll take be ruly, please? Of course, yeah. Uh, okay, Dylan. so it seems like there's a little bit of a disconnect. On one side, you have Demon Mama accurately pointing out the fact that a deplatforming Milo Yiannopoulos worked. On the other side, you have CTV accurately pointing to the fact that the drug war is fucked up. I did, I agree with both of you. Uh, I think we They're can not the come same to thing. a common understanding that when these figures are banned from uh, social media platforms, there obviously is some outrage. I don't think it's controversial to admit okay, one that. Time, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just saw the Eris thing. Eris yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was going to give it to her anyways. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I think it's like pretty understandable that some people are going to get upset when their favorite yeah, media star right. gets banned. But I also think a stronger uh, motivator is just people are lazy. They will forget about it. They will go on Twitter and let the algorithm decide. They will find a new personality to like. They will Harris and, and the text slowly raised over hand time, on her screen. those old figures they they fade out, and their passion for how angry they were when Trump was banned will die out, and some new issue will come up. And and I and I think both sides are correct here. Uh, I guess we should go to Eris probably. She was next. Score. I get a tap. <laughs> um, yeah, I try to write it subtly, raise my hand, you know, but. 
um because i yeah I, I don't have the ability to raise my hand unfortunately um but i really agreed with everything maddie and dear mama had to say so you know gucci on the girls in the room the okay ctv i had a question for you um this is my first time meeting you so ni nice to meet you um the you mentioned earlier like you seem to kind of really harp on this idea of it's it should be totally okay as long you can just completely edit your own content you know you can just click block click turn it off and that seems to be like a common a common thing do you would you apply that to all other issues or is this only because i'm guessing there's some content that you think should be banned i'm still um, trying yeah because I mean... it's not like if someone is just posting i don't know child pornography um everywhere you know it's an answer to that wouldn't just be like oh let's just turn off that content right because it's harmful for the for the larger community okay can you clarify your question because i feel like there was like two parts of it that didn't exactly mold together um well, I was just wondering if there would be any other situations that you would apply that to, that idea of removing, you know, oh, just edit your own content, your own content, right? The thing that you're that you're putting your your time, effort, and energy into, right? You should probably be doing a certain amount of editing with that if you if you care about it at all, right? If you're building something, right, you want to make sure that you understand the specifications, electrical currents that could be running through something. Uh, you know, different dimensions of wood that you might need to have built in order to form a structure. So, like, there's a whole lot of editing that goes into anything that anybody is doing if they care about what they're doing, right? If you're more haphazard about the way that you do that, then you are, say, in the instance of electricity, <laughs> are going to get an electrifying experience when you get held responsible for yes. you not doing your He's fucking homework, Warhammer, many says. right? So the same thing can happen with regard to your, the words that you choose to use or the, 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 the hateful nature or the possible threatening or otherwise nature uh, use of those words. Absolutely but do you think it's always possible. responsibility of like the consumer of say like Facebook, if we're talking about Facebook. Do you think it's always the consumer of the um, uh, consumer's responsibility um, to be turning off any kind of content that is problematic? The individual is ultimately always responsible to the individual. That's the case for child pornography. In, are, are someone, child pornography someone watching, that... someone watching child mm -hmm. pornography. Do you think that there's a situation Comes where they are not individually responsible for partaking in that particular type of content? If, if it just comes up on your feed, right? Most people would not just turn it off. Most people would report it to Facebook oh, so yeah. that account gets banned, right? That's, Would you agree yeah. that that's the right recourse? Else is being abused and that's that's literal footage of someone else like being abused like yeah, someone committing a all. crime. Wait, but so but, but then we, that means that we're establishing at least be, that it's look, okay. But to so be we're, wrong but that means that we're establishing a, that it's at least okay to expect some kind of standard for those companies um to be abiding by. Okay. So it, so it just seems to be that you just don't think that what Trump did um you know is uh you know comparable wrong about something is not a crime though like it, it, it's probably better arguably for them to be on like it makes what if it you're inciting violence like wait but donald trump did commit crimes look, look we can look at like, it all types yes, of examples illegal. of political figures that have been using the same type of rhetoric on all types of sides for a long time right the fact that that's that not true though it is true. That's false. We've got Maxine yeah, Waters as a no, you're, you're totally wrong. In, in you're just, you're just, she was saying, just go get in people's wrong, faces and push them out of the way and get more confrontational. You know, these this is not even comparable. Happening. It's already this been to the fucking you're house. You're just a liar, wait, 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 though. You're just a liar. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. What's it's that? not about one lying. Sec, one sec. It's already yeah, you are, though. There's no. Hang on, Dima, moment. One sec. Can't we not say that what Maxine Waters did was wrong, too? Yeah, why can't we do that? We, okay, so but we're not talking about Maxine Waters. This is about Trump. Right. So the point is, is that when we're talking about political rhetoric, which is how Maxine Waters even got brought up into it as an example, right, okay. is that the rhetoric is being used. And this is what Nacho is talking about with go, Nacho. Take it from there. Well, are we the real question is, like, are we going to just let the corporate private corporations decide what is going to be in our feed and what's not going to they be they already do that though they like already they're do always that saying. So, so we so we need to either reword the part of section 230 where they talk about like lewd lavishes or otherwise objectionable that that's that little section otherwise objectionable those two words are what would allow social media companies to basically b ban and block people and remove people at 
at their own will. So it just depends on the day. Now, next, you know, two elections from now, it could be the other way around, and you could you could see them cracking down on those who are on the left. Like, we don't want this to be the situation. We don't want them to have that much power over. So either we need to reword Section 230, we need to come up with some kind of, like, no. uh, public social media. I have no idea. Like, It's not just Section 230, though. But so you want to have I'll a touch on these in a second. Program? Okay. Hey, I I'm think Shave's do Shave Republican. Dog was next. Okay. I'll trade with a comment as well. Okay. Uh, and I would like a Ferrari. Okay. So I just got back. Eris got to talk, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, on the list I have, it's going to be Counter, uh, Shaved, Demon, then Maddie. Okay. Great. No, not show after that. I'll be super brief too. I'll, I'll basically give you guys more fuel to the fire. Um, so my he, here's my concern that I think Nacho is is articulating that I think is very real is that when you have algorithmic uh, content dictated by uh, social media companies, you can basically build or bury stories as you see fit. Um, this is a really this is a really large concern. Um, I think Hunter Biden is a good example, but I think an even better example is uh, Jelaine Maxwell. Jelaine Maxwell was the uh, basically the mistress of Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein was a person who was accused and convicted of uh, basically hiring, recruiting, and abusing underage prostitutes. Uh, he had various uh, high-level political figures who were his friends at certain periods of time. These include Trump himself. This includes Bill Clinton. This includes a whole host of people who are, very, I think, uh, Alan Dershowitz. Um, this includes a whole bunch of really powerful people. And what happened was Jeffrey Epstein uh, allegedly committed suicide in jail. And his uh, mistress is now under prosecution, but we don't hear anything about her. About the mistress who helped recruit underage prostitutes that allegedly had sex with some of the most powerful people on the planet. And what we also right. don't know, um, I, I'll leave, I have more conspiratorial shit, uh, but basically you should check out who Jelaine Maxwell's dad is. Um, and, and basically the, yeah, the know, point yes. being that like, here, did an intel agency honeypot a bunch of high level, uh, pro, uh, you know, a, a bunch of high level people? Was this just a billionaire playing power games? We literally don't know because the news and algorithmic, uh, al algorithmic cycle is not interested in promoting this story because it fucks over rich and powerful people. And that's that's my fear, and I think the fear that Nacho was talking about is if you leave this in the hands of purely corporations and if everybody gets their news from uh, social media, then they can bury or build stories as these, they see fit. But, Yield. But news the company's been doing that forever. Sure. If anything, there's more transparency now, even with the suppression mm -hmm. that you think there is on social media. You can't uh, deny that there's a hundred percent, like way more uh, news and you know, uh, well, the only, various the only reason, Yeah, the only reason why I know uh, who Jelaine Maxwell's dad is is because I have the ability to Google him. Um, but but at the same time, like that, this is kind of my point. This is why I'm not advocating for government intervention. Saying that it better the devil you know than the devil you don't not the devil yeah, at the basic principle of no government intervention in this um I, i'm not no but um i can at least recognize facebook's position and how they came to be such a massive market force and i don't know why so many people are like fighting to retain this certain platform like at least like they want it their way and they 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 don't want the corporation to rule themselves this is a Facebook is like a online society of 2.7 billion people. And like up until now, they even haven't had to like face these kind of major questions of how they're going to govern it. Um, and it's an incredibly complex question. Um, I don't want to like skim over anything, but I wanted to at least like address CTV. Some people want moderated platforms. Other people don't. Some people want entirely self-moderation. Other people want to like have a safe environment. There's really kind of, two large examples of how we organize our like social media platforms there's the like really centralized like facebook twitter and account based identity based like um platforms and then there's the like anonymous platforms like 4chan when you enter into like a more centralized one you have like the basic set of rules you have your tos you have like the laws that's already governed there and then you also have like an agreement to arbitration they get to basically kind of decide how they receive you and whether or not they're going to continue on your platform 
if you go on 4chan where there's no accounts other than trip coding, uh, the first thing you're hit with um, is uh, a quote, a very important quote, is that the, the stories and information posted here are artistic works of fiction and falsehood. Only a fool would take anything posted here as fact. The only other rules that govern this site are no illicit content. And, and that basically governs all websites on the internet. The ones that have tried like 8chan fell like horrible victim to like, um, you know, CP issues and stuff. So it's not around anymore. They weren't able to effectively moderate their site. But like 4chan on the other hand, like if you want to go and try and compete in this highly like anarchist market of ideas, of self-moderation where you literally moderation. like hide what you don't want to see and like you could see like links to live leak or anything else. Yo, like you can wait, choose can you give me that. a moment? Yeah. Yo, um, no comment, chick. You keep re uh, rehosting my stream. I'm gonna take your shit down. So stop. This is your one warning. Continue. Okay. Um, on the other hand, uh, yikes. Like I understand the this concern of having big corporations like dictate their own decisions, but like I think Facebook's gonna die in the future. Most people are moving towards back towards like federated systems of self moderation. You you like yeah, associate still the going. Discord it's that you want to hang out with. It's you, ridiculous. The circles are closing. People are moving back to she's dirty rat IRC, she's restreaming, chat, restreaming, Matrix, not rehosting, right? restreaming. Moving away from these big centralized platatforms and kind of like trying to reinstitute self governance on the internet and I really can develop. In a second. Um, these kind of systems. I'm someone who's very familiar. Restreaming. With kind of what it means out, is that you're um, as well as like just with the laws, basically and how they replaying work. Like, the show live. Uh, if you like, it's a dirty Section thing. I'll talk if about you it. After. Run a social media platform or like an archive website, and illicit content gets hosted on there. You're not responsible for it until it's reported. Until you're aware I'll talk about of it the after. content on your website, like the the yes, the ripping off the strings to somebody's yes. life or something like that. Uh, that nobody can act on it or remove it or like take any kind of movement. So like the report system and that kind of like upward level, like that is just a standard that is always going to be around in, in, in online governance is this reporting. Like it's a good thing. It helps filter content, especially illicit content. So yeah, there's a, been a couple of different things that we've touched on here that I wanted to touch on. The first one, um, is a bit of a throwback, so I'll actually. Make I know that I said a, second. a lot. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good. The first one I want to respond. I do want to say, like, with regard to 4chan and even 8chan, these are not spaces that are moderation free. They are just on the low end of moderation. And like, if you've ever spent any time on these sites, you know that there are mods, there are moderation rules, and those mo moderation rules can be pretty strict. The idea of like a free speech zone on the internet simply doesn't happen there's no full one because they don't work they don't work on a mechanical level the moment that you um take or get rid of all the rules you will just end up with spammed uh uh bitcoin scams p porn all kinds of nonsense it's literally unusable it becomes unusable and um so that's part of it and then the other part uh you know ctv isn't here but i mean i don't really honestly don't know if that's going to change much the drug war analogy is incredibly stupid the idea that there's like a difference that there's no difference between a person using a platform like a bullhorn to spread misinformation versus drug dealers selling something that people consume and use to get high and then you try to repress that and so people actually want it more and are willing to pay more these are just like they're totally different things and i understand that there's like hey there's truth in both of these statements but it's like a non sequitur there's barely any comparisons between uh the um the idea of like free speech on the internet and and the drug war they're just really they're those aren't comparable at all again you're talking about restricting a a consume a, a consumer desi a desired consumer good whether you want to call it that or not versus um talking about somebody who's blasting out disinformation or something else like that in addition there was um some there was a couple of other things that were brought up uh, comparisons to other political figures and other people who may have put out um bad messaging or whatever yeah i agree if you violate the tos hey you might get kicked off and you probably should if you violate the tos um but uh, the fact of the matter is we already have examples of like all kinds of 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 
people getting banned from all kinds of stuff. What what happened with Donald Trump was genuinely unprecedented. I can think of almost no example in the in internet history of someone who flaunted and violated every TOS in addition to national laws while not receiving anything but a slap on the wrist. I mean, they had to, like, like Twitter had to invent like three entirely new features just to deal with Trump. There was no uh, alert of misinformation that could appear on a tweet in front of something and link to something else before t Donald Trump exists. He was so bad that they had to do it. So like the idea that like, oh, it's everybody, this, all politicians do that. No, they don't. Do all politicians lie? Yes. But very few of them get to the level of, of just abject disinformation and complete disregard for any sense of democracy or civil society as Donald Trump does. Sorry, it's just yeah, simply, simply so fact. You're absolutely right. The, right. the fact that I wasn't sitting here didn't make your bad ideas any better, right? So they're definitely still bad. So this the rhetoric has crickets. been no different than a lot of the other politicians that are out there using the same rhetoric. Okay. Sorry, I don't... What? Okay, there. It's been any different than what other politicians have already been saying. What? Be confrontational. We gotta fight, fight, fight! Right? Matter of fact, that's just a lot of sports what are you language talking you about? whenever people are getting ready to you know, start playing football or something. Am I the so, only one here who's just like, like missed like a huge chunk of that sentence that, and it also still didn't make sense afterwards? Or was that? Huh? I blacked out. I don't I know. I feel like we're looping what? a little bit. Can I jump in? Can I jump in for a second? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So Shave Dog, you said that uh, some website, they, they say this is a big meme. Don't take anything here seriously. Uh, yeah. Right? So what? 4chan like has the disclaimer. Oh, okay. Anything okay, okay. taken here, they're posted here is a work of fiction, only a fool. So like, as demon mama said it's not totally ungoverned like there's like you have to keep it topical and stuff right. but essentially the base rule like you can throw the in in slur or f slur on so can what, I... any portion of the website is not moderated that's so I kind think, of yeah so i think there's a kind of a bigger story here and that would yeah, be CTV's like real mad. You, have, you see recently uh i just saw this recently and i looked through the entire court uh document of tucker carlson and how he can't be held responsible for anything he says because they basically have gotten an out where they say everything he says is just uh, for show or for Wait, what's entertainment the or whatever. What's the F? That is kind of an out where when we can all agree, what's the everyone F's? here should be able to agree that nobody watches Tucker Carlson for for what? entertainment. The people who watch him believe that what he's delivering is the news. So I think there's a little bit of responsibility here that um what the hell's that, happening that we should take into consideration uh, where it's like. If someone says, hey, everything, don't take anything I say seriously, and then they present it in a serious manner, and they pretend like it's news, they have a news desk, da 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 YouTube? Where okay, do we draw YouTube. the line? How do we, how do we, how okay. do we, where do we go from here, I guess? Refresh, refresh. Um, YouTube is good. So basically, Jesus Christ. until like 1992, I want to say, or like 1980-something, <sighs> there hurt was something called the bit. Fairness Doctrine, uh, which was basically something that stated that, uh, you know, if you presented a certain narrative, you also had to uh, present competing narratives. Um, I know that this is incredibly difficult <clears throat> to uh, do on the internet. Because the truth is there's not two narratives or three narratives anymore. There's 10,000 narratives. Um, so, so that's kind of hard to do fairness doctrine. Like we start talking about like, I don't know, uh, you know, Jeffrey Epstein. And then we have to bring Thank like you death before on, decap. right? Like it, it's that. hard. It's hard to moderate that kind of shit. Um, but is you could say if you are a uh, legacy media, like uh, cable, news shows, whatever, um, you have to abide by the fairness doctrine, or you have to have a statement about whether or not you are explicitly a news program or explicitly an entertainment program or an edutainment program. Uh, basically uh, delineating the, those two kinds of content, that way if people want news, there's the, the classic Tom Brokaw or uh, Walter Cronkite kind of thing where it's like, here's the facts, here's the narratives, here's the factions, blah, 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 here's everybody's perspective. And then after that, you could say, hey, here's the edutainment or entertainment section of the portion. And then you have Tucker Carlson uh, coming out talking about how Nancy Pelosi is sucking adrenochrome out of like abortion. Yeah, yeah, shit. it's weird. And like, and so you could fucking, you could separate those two forms of content uh, publicly. And even on the internet, um, 
like so so i know that like freedom of speech you know don't don't compel people's speech don't tell them what they can say what they can't say all that kind of shit but at the same time if at the mm. beginning of my show i had to say hey listen i'm an asshole with a webcam and i just have an uh, have opinions um i try to make sure those opinions are rooted in reality uh dylan does this shit before shows sometimes where he basically calls all of us assholes to his audience and says hey these are just assholes with webcams uh take everything they say with a grain of salt true, um, true. i don't i don't think that's like an undue or unfair caveat um, to put, especially on people who are profiting from creating content, um, I don't think that's an undue burden to say, hey, is this news, factual presentation of stats and data and narratives in, for your review and consideration from a semi-objective perspective, or this is entertainment, this is our opinions and uh, this is our opinions. Sure, we didn't lose YouTube the, viewers. Maybe there we should did. be some sort we lost of like 50 uh, YouTube viewers. On using the word news if it's Aww. for entertainment. We lost like 50 YouTube uh, viewers. Yeah, I mean, oh, like, hurts. we, we can oh, work well. this out, but yeah. life. you would have to have, this idea is incredibly unpopular out of like the four people nodding their heads here. Uh, because if you if you bring this out to mainstream America, then YouTube must be say, having issues. This is America. Don't tell me what to say. Don't tell me what to do. Fuck yeah, make you. sure to like and subscribe. Uh, I thought this was Helps America. Me a lot. And that's pretty much going to be the whole. Didn't, I mean, all these platforms put kept putting all the little banners under everything. Anytime you even mention, like, if you just put COVID in the title, like, they're going to put a little banner on your thing that says, like, here, CDC results, like, all this stuff. Like, what's wrong with doing that? And then if someone is consistently spreading like some kind of misinformation or whatever, you can have them, you know what I mean? And that's where I get, it bothers me to like, I don't want to force a social media company, a private company to do these kind of things. So that's why I would, I would more lean towards like reinterpreting section 230. But I mean, how about they already, do, we already know what shadow banning is. Everybody here knows what shadow banning is. Um, so why not, instead of it being secretive like just be open about it just be like hey look you're consistently spreading misinformation you're consistently doing this da, 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 da. so we're going to take you and put you on like a no algorithm list like your your stuff will not be promoted by the algorithm you will not be on the play next tab ever you can still exist on this platform but people will only be able to come and visit your site if they had the link better to me because then someone can come to that place like i could go to trump's page and try to convince all the trump supporters that we have better options like okay. as a could you give me a as second? someone trying to move the republican party okay. in the other direction okay we're gonna go to maddie and then Eris. sorry Eris, it's just sometimes hard to see the flustered face okay okay um one thing i think that is really important to remember as well is that that's awesome Gayfish. i'll check it out major after. reason Thank you. why a lot of these companies have tos's in the first place is because they are looking to mitigate risk because at the end of the day, they are there to make money. We exist in a capitalist system. So these companies are only going to provide this kind of service so long as it is profitable. It is profitable because they sell massive space to advertisers and brands who associate with them. The issue with then eliminate the bulk of the moderation um, that they currently have instituted as part of being on their platform, they run the risk of then having brands drop spending with those companies because they don't want to be associated with things like neo-Nazism, with pedophilia, with all these other things. So at the end of the day, we have to remember that these companies are there to mitigate risk. So that is a significant reason why they um, move to ban certain things. Because if I'm a Nike, I'm a Coca-Cola, I don't want my ad showing up um, next to uh, content that could be potentially a, a brand risk. I would spend my advertising money elsewhere. And, you know, hey, thank you, Conoclast. Whether or thank not you so it's much. It's going great. Thank you so much. Whatever. Happy to have you. But know that at the end of the You're day, very happy to a have lot you, of it's going to be, thank well, you. what threatens the profit margin for those companies? And for a lot of the other organizations that spend a lot of money with them, um, where Twitter and Facebook get the bulk of their revenue, they don't want to be associated with that content. So at the end of the day, we can complain as much as we want, but if it's not profitable and it's going to be a brand risk to big companies that spend a lot of advertising dollars, they're going to follow what those companies want. I mean, Trump was definitely able or profitable as far as like advertisements go, like, but to a certain degree, still, like profitable the, to the, hate. The fact the fact that the social those social media platforms will allow uh, leaders from other countries to call for the death of people from another nation or the death of a, a leader of another nation, and then th these companies and corporations don't blink an eye at that. I feel like 
they do, and I would want to. Really I, I would need you to cite that. what like a specific time when that happened. I would have refused for this. Though. I I, I want to say it was like Saudi officials or something. I'll I'll grab the link. Because I because I agree. I think it should be consistent across the board. Um, with the way they enforce TOS. In fact, Twitter is the worst um, perpetuator of this, where if you have a blue check mark, um, you are held to a completely different standard in terms of um, TOS violations and actually seeing um, any accountability for those violations than if you don't have a blue check mark. So I agree. I would like to see their TOS more evenly enforced. Nacho, I think it's someone said they want to see Israel wiped off the map or something. Uh, I almost it guarantee was, you that was Ayatollah Khomeini. Yeah, I think it was like a specific Middle Eastern leader. Ayatollah. Can we move it over? I think he should oh. be banned. Uh, Dima Mama raising their uh, her hand. Can we uh, throw it over to her? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. We're touching on this on the on the sort of profit incentive um, getting in the way of, of either the betterment of the site or the betterment of the world. Um, I mean, th arguably, that already happened with Trump. The only reason that um, that Twitter gave Trump so many warnings um, seems to be because his followers and his presence was relatively profitable for them. It certainly was for Facebook. Um, Facebook made millions of dollars like docu publicly documented dollars off of donald trump's advertisements that his teams were purchasing on there so they're taking a pro like you know it's on one hand it speaks to the level of um of of uh the degree to which the profit incentive can stand in the way because what what this is sort of illustrates is that it would have been better for a lot of reasons to take trump off but the companies didn't do it because they wanted to keep making money even though he was shitting up their space even though his followers were shitting up the space for everyone else even though they were literally uh i mean there's a million things you could talk about like i said there's like an overwhelming amount that we could specifically touch on everything from donald trump organizing people into uh into insurrectionary action to covid misinformation we could talk about all those that's one of the things too but we've also seen this go in the other way. And I do agree um, that there is some issues with the idea of, of handing over all like like all moderation or uh, power of of whatever to to uh, corporations because we already see this happen. I mean, there was a massive issue. People don't remember this because it happened quite a while ago. But uh, at one point, YouTube was actively suppressing um, LGBT content because it wasn't advertiser friendly. Like quite, li and it still happens to this day. By the way, you will get one of the most surefire ways to demonetize your video is to put the word "gay" in the title. It will almost always guarantee a demonetization, even if you're not talking about anything else that otherwise is demonetizable. There are just a lot of companies that automatically shut that down. So we do have issues with this, but I, I, I don't think that it's, uh, I don't think that it's as simple as saying like, oh, well, Donald Trump shouldn't be banned or, or anything like that. Donald Trump was just, again, flagrantly violating TOS, completely making these pl places unusable to all the other users. And I, I don't know, like, there's a lot of people that fixate on on section 230 that's not really the issue the greater issue is that we don't know yet we haven't yet figured out how to manage uh how to deal with the fact that we have corporations that control social space now we haven't figured that out at all um but the answer isn't in basically making the modern internet impossible via striking down section 230 or something along those lines and I wouldn't call for like striking it down. I just think it, it, there's parts of it that need to be more strictly interpreted. But I mean, and to go back to something that was said way early, I don't want to keep it on Trump too much because I, I think you're right. Like there's a, there's a deeper issue, but like the data for this was something that I wrote down way earlier. So I'm going way back, but data for like numbers uh, for Trump, like dropping on these websites, like isn't really a good indicator right now, given the fact that he lost the election. So like, of course, the topic of conversation is going to change to like what Biden is going to do, et cetera. But I mean, Trump is still holding huge speeches. Like he just held another one I thought that was live. I could be wrong about this, but it was on uh, RSBN and usually they only do like his live speeches. So like there was a massive crowd. They could have been doing a replay and I'll have to go look it up for, to be sure. I'll look it up in my history. But uh, And, and True, he still has a massive email. He's still getting donations like crazy. And every right-leaning pundit and politician still sees him as the only viable candidate right now as far as like everyone to get behind. So he still clearly has a massive following. And the the easiest way for me, I think, in my opinion, to be able to try to turn some of the people away is if he was allowed on these spaces where people could come on there and try to attack and critique 
his ideals are in his platform and move people away from that. But like, that didn't work for the last, what I'm like, trying to do. So. Yeah, it didn't work for the last four years though. And yeah. that, and that sort of speaks like the current state of affairs kind of speaks to the fact that no offense, but, but anti-Trump right-wingers failed. You failed to self-regulate your own party and you let a bunch of conspiratorial maniacs basically take it over and now it's out of your control and when everybody else has to say okay like this guy that you let take over your party that you all got on board with for a long time is now ruining everything else and killing thousands of people by spreading dis explicit disinformation well like you like whether you want to argue with him more or not, he's become a problem for everybody else in the world. So like, even, yeah, sorry, like, even now, like that you're removing um, a representative from house leadership just because she doesn't go along with the lie that Trump didn't like actually win the election and it was stolen. Like that's still happening right now because that's how far his, rhetoric and like blind Where's worship the has has the core of the republican party and a Ooh. lot of it's because people weren't going to i know i'm using very inflammatory rhetoric it's the same kind of rhetoric i use when i talk about connor's mom <laughs> but um it's but like this is there was an opportunity at some point for the gop to say no this is unacceptable and to rebuff it but that didn't happen and now What's we're the command seeing what in chat? Like. Mods, the command for don't for number one, not Dorothy stirring the pot. Mantu, a no, no saint, fucking okay. writing. Uh, Stay here second, and watch me. Don't fucking pay attention all. to those losers. Yeah. So this is this is a this is a frustration um, as somebody who is typically identified as center. Oh, you're the you're the rational Hate, that's right That's the one. Uh, except when it comes to guns. Mm -hmm. Um, but if this, you want me to the, talk about the drama, I'll fucking thing, talk about it. But don't you dare like, go over to that goddamn out, stream. Um, Stay here. You know, Fuck. Maybe some Jordan Peterson milk toast bullshit about personal responsibility. Um, I can talk about like uh, mixed balls. economy capitalism as preferable to socialism. Um, I can talk about you know the the power of like two parent households and the need for families and blah blah blah. Um, and basically, um, I, I'm doing a better job, and I'm not taking it personal. Okay, um, that's but, fine. I trust you, Ziggy. Some of the, I know you're not going to uh, rhetoric do from bad. the left wing has been a bit aggressive. I think that's okay to to put put it tactfully. Um, so my my problem with that is that there are real things that we could be working on. Um, I think law enforcement reform is a good example. I think immigration reform is a good example. Um, I think that a lot more people, because of the disaster of COVID, uh, um, are a little bit more open to government redistributive uh, redistributism when it comes to taxes um, and benefits. Um, so there is a whole host of productive things that we could work on. But basically what I'm getting is you, and, and this is one of my problems with uh, panel shows in general, is like you have to sign on to fundamental axiomatic leftist beliefs or else you're a shit bag. Um, and if you don't sign on to these axiomatic beliefs, then you're a fucking asshole. And like, basically we can't move forward on the, on the things that might be productive or compromise. So my options are either like, uh, you know, anarcho-capitalist fucking neo-monarchy with Trump or fucking like crazy fucking progressivism. And I'm sorry, like I can't sign on for either one. Wait, like, wait, where did that to, happen in this, where did that happen in this panel? Sides. Like, where has that happened? I don't think there's been well, any attempt at that. Yeah, well, like no, 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 Demon Mama, I'm very happy that our relationship is significantly improved from when we first started. But I think that you could Same even describe you, our relationship. Okay. <laughs> I think you could even describe our relationship when it first started as a little bit contentious. I think that's fair to say. I mean, yeah, but listen, let's not let's not try to hash that out here on this panel. All I'm saying is on this, especially on this topic, I think that the left has been more than reasonable. Whereas, yeah. you know, besides and, and to your credit counterpoints, I, can I think back that up too. Yeah, I, I think. Thank you. Um, but I think that I think uh, I think your position is 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 pretty reasonable on this um, counterpoints. I just I just think that like this this you know, most of my contentions have come from a couple of small contentions with American Nacho's position and mostly a lot with critically thinking veterans. Like, like I can't even, I don't even want to call it a position. It's just a, like the idea that you can just, you know, if you see something bad that you don't like on the internet, oh, we'll just block it and that'll fix it. As if like, yeah, you know, there's just like a, a den of, of, I think Eris was completely on point. The idea that you could just, oh, I don't want to see, you know, child porn is coming on my screen. Oh, just block it. You know, you can't let the social media companies can't do anything about that's, that. Nobody can do anything about it, except for maybe if we make the the department of... Oh, but that's all of, Demon Mama knows how to do, right? It's just like paint this whole negative picture what? over here that actually didn't well, happen. 
right? And then, like, what actually happened is over here not being the same thing. What? Oh, we still don't. <laughs> I, I'm we sorry. Still I don't. Missing... I literally don't actually know what that means. Like, what do you mean by any of those words? That sentence so, made no sense to me. Can anybody else explain what he meant there? Does I don't even want to. Look, look, no, but I, I want to touch. I, I can back add, up what guys, you were we, saying. We, can yeah, I just about... say it? We, we completely hey, skipped we... Eris. Uh, I, I, I DM, okay. I DM'd Eris earlier. And, uh, well, D Eris DM'd me and said that she didn't want to speak, oh. I think. Uh, Eris, did you, was there was there a correction at some point? Did you want to No, speak? no, no. You were right. Okay. So I actually think we should probably wrap this up soon because we do want to get to the other topics. It's already 9.30 almost p.m. And we, that means we only have two hours left. So... Uh, do you guys want to go around the room? It's funny, eighty five to two D Derek. If there's anything okay. good, we're take gonna some do clips. Outros. Teams, we're gonna start with you. Take some good okay. clips. Uh, so I think we'll this laugh is at an interesting, fruitful discussion. Um, again, I don't really think Trump is gonna be relevant. A lot of people think he's gonna run again. I don't see it happening. I think Trump realized think how is. difficult we'll talk about that after. it is to be don't a worry, successful we're talk about politician. It. And if anything, he can go start his own media company where he can be surrounded by yes men, and he doesn't have to get uh, bogged down in the nitty gritty of. Uh, you know politics uh so i don't really think it's that big of an issue but furthermore i think that what the the, the interesting discussion was about like uh you know what i brought up i think nobody was, understands uh, what he was of, saying he was just talking key his point ass. in this topic is that like when you have people that are spouting scientific misinformation with such a large platform they're literally public they're they're literally publishing scientific uh studies or scientific claims that have not gone through the rigors that is required for a scientific publication to make it to a journal we'll talk about that i think this is everyone. something that we should be very uh you know look at very carefully because if we start going down this route where every fucking person with a uh, hundred thousand million people 10 whatever 60 million people is able to uh just spout any sort of scientific misinformation they want we quickly start going down a path that can result in a lot of uh, negative harm done and I, I, the example i always like to use is something that we can all agree is a, a functioning thing it's like if someone comes out imagine if donald trump tweeted out hey everyone insulin doesn't work if you have diabetes don't take insulin we would all unanimously yes. agree that this is completely irresponsible and it should be deplatformed. So just going on that, I think that he should be deplatformed and fuck it. Some other Good luck, Republican Max. will rise to power and or rise up in the ranks, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, next I'm going to throw it over to American Nacho. Is it easy to hear me now, by the way? Is it easier to hear me by chance? Okay, American Nacho is next. Yeah, so <clears throat> as, a, as the... Uh new term i think anyways i'm still looking into it but uh progressive republican like it this makes it more difficult for me to like some of this bullshit that surrounds trump so personally i still don't know if he should be banned like you raised an interesting article where he did uh i went and watched that and read the article where he talked about oh like, you have no idea that, castrix like, hillary's assassination but him saying it off the platform makes it like muddies the water as far as like does that mean the platform shouldn't host him or whatever the case may be i don't know but either either way it is a pretty serious situation that we're in because underlying trump's ban is like the corporation to basically have a monopoly on the quote unquote like town square and that's where it gets that's where it bothers me and i think the majority of people on the left and the right who have problems with like censorship etc so we really need to start considering looking into like you know reinterpreting section 230 or some coming out with some kind of like public option um uh, so th something has to change though with the way um we treat this new like town square so to speak um th there are other things that i wanted to tack on to the end of what counterpoints was talking about earlier <laughs> good one comic such fan as things like thank if, you Land if I said the, landricities the name, thank you so Walkie, much probably nobody in this room deeply room appreciate it. that is or if i said reality winner it is like these are people who like so these these are things that were definitely repressed by by the media because it is it is um it's of our government like overstepping some serious uh boundaries and uh going after people who are like whistleblowers like nsa whistleblowers etc et people who leak documents on a lower 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 government level and basically throwing the book at them um and and these things are okay to to be repressed you know by the media and it makes it really hard like I said, I'm just going to repeat it. Like, Chelsea Manning it really wrong. galvanizes those who are believing 
some of these conspiracies uh, whenever you do ban a, a, a person like Trump, especially someone who has been president, like it makes it even harder the fact that he was actually the president, etc. So, okay, um, I would rather have like open shadow banning or something like that. Okay, so. shaved. Um, I don't want to claim to have like some amount of secret knowledge or memes, but I'm someone who's spent, I'm sure everybody else has, but spent an incredible amount of time in online spaces over the years. Um, one of those things that I do is I archive them as well in mass. I help moderate and administrate the largest and most detailed 4chan archive, as well as help maintain um, archives with like the Wayback Machine online. Um, absolutely. Demon Mama is 100% right that actually the liberal spaces um, were incredibly like Thank you. cautious on like cracking down on people. Yes, they were. There was like so many from 2015 onwards, yep. like so many debates over are the Donald or like, how are we going to respond to this kind of speech? Like, do we want to allow this? And eventually as time went on, I guess they won, but it took the entirety of Donald Trump's presidency to happen. Yep. Um, I don't want to like say that this was caused by 4chan and the meme lords and the hacksaws, but it's more that like 4chan was the the less moderated alternative where the already organized people could go and meme. And then Trump was a meme dude that you could make funny stuff about in the positive or negative light. And it just so happened in those spaces, if you put them in a positive light, they get more triggered reactions that they want. Um, content moderation is incredibly difficult. Um, and like now that their popularity is over and people don't want to hear about it, the majority of yeah, it's a bad argument, Venus. I agree. Want them gone, and that's how it's going to be. Just done on if this you don't issue. like it, you can go to a less governed space like 4chan or try and start up your own. As long as you can afford to like moderate all the illicit content, and make sure righties don't post like uh, threats of genocide and or or lefties even either or. You know, starting these communities is incredibly difficult. So mm -hmm. whatever it is, if you if you want to have it, you can go start it, but you've got to compete with someone who already guarantees you're not going to run into CP or death threats on their platform. Yep. Yep. Okay. Demon Mama. Um, yeah. Uh, it's funny that you bring up the Donald. I think that's one of the greatest examples of a, a subreddit that state overstate its welcome. In fact, like Reddit was Reddit was so reluctant to censor um, and they were they engaged in in my opinion and I don't think they're a perfect company but I think they engaged with regard to censorship in incredibly good faith the Donald is so bad it is so bad I have streams of us going over the Donald and just just seeing thousands of upvotes on posts that are just explicitly advocating for the assassination of specific political uh opponents of donald trump this was all over the place and reddit took forever to do it so the idea that like the right is being like super super persecuted online is the opposite is true that they've been given like an unbelievable amount of leeway and um and you know i don't know i agree that there are issues with the overall conversation of how do we moderate content how do we manage the fact that we live in an age where there's like all these strange social s spheres but like the claims of of the vi the exaggerated victimhood claims are just not realistic they're not realistic donald trump and basically everyone associated with donald trump um were some of the worst actors we've seen on the internet and they they moved as a whole because they were directed by donald trump and they worshiped him as what do they say on the donald uh geotis god emperor of the united states um damn that's a pretty serious problem and i i think that uh i think that we've thoroughly shown that the problems of, like that donald trump represents online are significantly more than whether than the problems that are generated from him being banned off of one or two platforms okay we're gonna throw it over to ctv somebody if if that's happening make sure that dylan knows if there's a you call to it. action being done you clip you it samantha banana yeah, clip it and send it to dylan gotta fuck things clip up on that the last shit one, right guess, away right? clip so, it right away Okay, uh, wait, can I just say something quick? I Look, everybody already knows I'm going going through a lot right now. So apparently me, and I'm just going to say this publicly because I have, I have lost all <clears throat> ability to reason about what is a good or not good thing to say. So apparently I just tell somebody to not restream my content. And so now she, as a no comment chick, is going through all my old streams that she's ever been on and flagging it for her being on there so i didn't even submit a report i just said stop doing it and oh or maybe God. i will have to okay 
Got Stop it. Being an asshole. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, great. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Okay. It's you know so what? bad. Maybe I wish I know. the so bad. took me, so I wouldn't have to it's deal so with it. It's so bad, Sonia. Okay? Sorry, CTV. Yeah, <laughs> hey. Uh, I'm on. I'll re. I'll address so that I'll, afterwards. Uh, I'll, I'll take it after. Sorry. I'll take it after that. Sure. Why the fuck wouldn't I take it after that? Right. So no comment, mm -hmm. chick. Quit acting like you know what we all know you are. Who you are? I've called you out on hippy dippies before, so we all know what you are. Quit acting that way, right? Maybe elevate yourself, like I suggested before. I can. Right? I can so acknowledge, acknowledge we're gonna have to talk about this. We will like... have to talk about this after. I'll talk right? about it after. Okay, everybody, stick around. I'll talk about With it after. Regard to the topic. Take it easy, Zonia. Please There's take care of yourself. Disconnect from right? the internet Everybody if you agrees. need There's to, okay? Going to be Relax. And I agree that I know it's know, hard. In, in, in all things, there's always some type of moderation. You don't think that matters is what level, right? So with regard to Twitter and Facebook and all these other platforms, Somebody the ideal who's... situation for me is one where the the platform itself is not being held legally liable for the things that other people are putting on there, right? And at the same time, them not be the ones that are moderating that. We need the individuals and the communities themselves to be moderating those types of things between people. Now, obviously, right, the platform itself can have reporting and stuff like that to help communities be able to work together with the platform. But that's not to say that the platform itself needs to say, okay, well, now we're going to have these vague TOS rules and then – and then we're going to pick and choose the moderation that we're going Jesus to do. And Christ. that's where ultimately you end up having a problem is because there's not a consistency of the moderation. Take care of yourselves, Zonia, please. I think please. that more people would be able to respect what was going on if there was more consistency with the moderation. So it seems clear to me that the only way moving forward is just to remove any type of legal liability from the platforms so that they're not held responsible. While at the same time, uh, the... You, you, the user interfaces of the platforms get better as far as for individual it's true. Uh, it's true. moderation, and then that's true. how you're good ultimately faith. going to be able to blossom okay, thank better you. communities over Very time, good, Ziggy. Thank you. With more freedom and more control at the individual level. I didn't hear that, Dylan. Muted. Eris. Sorry. Okay, I I have the exact opposite perspective. I think we need to do more control. I think TOS is just there to make uh, these companies look good to their advertisers, and they rarely actually act upon them. Though I do agree with UCTV that they're not um, consistent in the way they act on it. I mean, the fact that Dusty would get banned for something that someone else did, but then we could all watch someone, um, you know, just give death threats, threaten to dox yeah, people, and all I'd that stuff. I'd say don't chat um, for now. You know, live on on Twitch, and there's Ziggy. nothing that was done in response to that. It's just like I think oh boy. in general, platforms need to be way more consistent um, and way more strict. The there is a huge problem. Number one, with misinformation that gets spread, okay, especially I'll check with my Discord. COVID. Give me a I mean, second. If anyone's on Facebook, there's so much misinformation that's being spread. And Donald Trump was one Discord of like, the prime fucked. people doing this. And there's a ton of people. I mean, there's people on the left who mis spread misinformation, too. I have seen um, the Young Turks, and I'm going to piss off some people. I've seen the Young Turks just put out outright lies um, and never try to repeat it. Sorry, never try to. And they never come back afterwards and say, oh, sorry, we, you know, we made a mistake there or something. They just get, get that, away with doing that, that, too. There's just tons of misinformation being spread, and I really think we need to get past this idea that people – that lying is free speech. Obviously, when it comes to certain things, there's like – you know, there's gray areas of what the truth is, okay? But I'm talking about there are some things that people can just say that are just outright lies, and there needs to be consequence, consequences to that. There's also a huge pandemic right now, an epidemic of – material and child pornography on the internet it's increased by i think 800 percent in the last five years um and no one is taking it seriously actually facebook of all the platforms ironically it's only facebook that even tracks um how often child abuse material is spread on their site um no one else is tracking it so like there is just a, i in general we need to we need to be pushing these platforms to be more responsible with what they allow on there um and uh yeah so i'm i'm totally fine with this ban i just think that they should i just wish they would apply it more equally okay uh next we're gonna throw it over to maddie then counter then we'll go on to the next topic okay it is a good thing that trump was deplatformed just as it was a good thing for milo insert last name here um, to also be deplatformed, as well as the Donald for it to be removed.
from Reddit. Um, this is so I frustrating, think, by the, the way. The Sorry, day, we're dealing with a bunch of bullshit right now. Here to, Thank you for those uh, who are helping money. me. And be risk averse, especially when it comes to their advertisers, since that is their primary source of income. So they are well within their rights to deplatform or moderate content as they see fit. Ultimately, I also think that from an ethical and moral standpoint, it is a good thing to remove we'll talk um, after the panel. hateful rhetoric from you're those good, platforms, you're good, especially devious, you're fine. when it was that rhetoric that led to an insurrection on January 6th. I do think it's worth I'm so glad that Connor brought up um, the fairness. Doctrine. Yeah, it's okay. We're going to have more stuff after. I There's tons am, of content after the I panel. So Just stick around. Because I think there is a real need for the reintroduction of a fairness doctrine that is crafted specifically for um, digital media in mind. Thanks um, for letting us know that. And yeah, I think that would watched, do a lot to course. combat the deliberate misinformation. No, but, not right now. Yeah. We'll talk about this all after. Um, fuck off on Facebook. All of our aunts and uncles that still post dumbass memes will still be there. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about it after. We're going to talk about everything okay, afterwards. And I'm going to throw it over to Counter. Yeah, so uh, American Nacho, I think the uh, first progressive Republican yes, Hal Malcolm, was uh, obviously. Teddy Roosevelt, who is somebody who I actually try to emulate. So uh, he's a Republican. He's, I don't think anybody would argue that he was left wing, but he cared about the environment. Um, he cared about American power. He cared about balance of power. He cared about um, the power of individuals. Um, and he also cared about uh, basically balancing economic power. He was one of the largest trust busters that we have had in American history. Um, so what uh, basically what I would say is just because the government, uh, oftentimes Republicans are skeptical. Probably of won't go that long death before decap. We'll at least, um, just because you're skeptical of government doesn't mean still. corporations are your friend and vice versa. Um, so what I would say is that we should be skeptical of power no matter where it comes from. Agreed. Um, and just because we agree, uh, if we oh, move to the town you, square, Zorba, I think that it opens up a whole bunch of Seriously. problematic things that I alluded to earlier. I do not want law enforcement officers arresting, uh, coming to my home to speak with my son um, because he uh, basically like, um, do you guys uh, teabagged? Uh, I don't know if anybody's going to be playing Halo in the next 20 years, um, but because he teabagged, talked some shit about somebody's mom and said that he was going to kill him. I don't want that Xbox Live message to be flagged and then for cops to come to my house and talk to my son. I would rather that he just takes a ban. I talk to him about profane language um, on the internet and then uh, both him and Dylan I, needs after a, break. a week yeah, ban, because I'm probably we got some big topics on the to internet, uh, we both get uh, lifted from our bans and get to go play video games together again. Yield. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next topic, which is going to be India. India has been going through a lot right now when it comes to COVID, a lot of COVID deaths, a lot of uh, huge spike in COVID cases. And so this has come into a kind of clash of two worldviews. One worldview thinking, well, we need to basically America first, an American first worldview. Like we don't need to worry about what's going on in India. Uh, Americans first. That's what the American government's job is. And another worldview of we should be helping uh, the nation of India uh, recover. We should be sending PPE. We should be waiving patent protections, all that. So the question is, should we be helping India? I'm going to start in the top left-hand corner with Heemed Out. Man, when when Danibo sent me the list of topics, uh, <laughs> I started uh, rubbing my hands together when I saw this one. I've literally spent the last like two weeks on my stream talking about this, debating people about this. And I'm going to have the unpopular position. And Demon Mom, I see you pointing at me. Uh, I'm going to have the unpopular position that uh, I'm not sure that waiving the IP is necessarily going to accomplish anything. And, and I'll get further into it later. However, I do think that, uh, you know, it, it comes an ethical question. Like, for example, uh, I'm from Canada. Canada was one of the first countries to put in purchase orders before Pfizer, Moderna, even finished their clinical trials, Canada put in orders because they knew they don't have the vaccination facility to uh, vaccinate their people. Now, what happened is, although we were first and we were like, yeah, we can vaccinate everyone seven times over, what ended up happening is the corporations decided not to fulfill those orders. Now, I work at a hospital here and I still don't have my second dose. And I know that there's Americans all over America, regular Americans that are like 10 years old, to, not, not, not 10, like 15, whatever, 20 years old, who have had their second dose. So, but I sympathize with the fact that we, should, we shouldn't go by who ordered it first. You should probably go by who needs it most. So in that case, I definitely think that India should get helped out as much as possible. However, I just don't see the waving of the IP as a solution to helping them. 
every single scenario in which a factory or facility has been up to par when it comes to production uh, capabilities, they have gotten licenses from these uh, com companies. For example, in uh, India right now, AstraZeneca oh, so is ready. already producing vaccines. So it doesn't make sense to me why these companies wouldn't want to get a massive market share in India, for example, that has the second biggest population in the world by licensing out their formulas when they know that the for vaccine can be produced efficacious efficaciously and effectively now the other question is let's say you waive the ip but you don't have uh regulations or you don't have a check on the production facility what you have to end up doing is every batch that gets made in every country in the world you're gonna have to do animal testing phase mm -hmm. one phase two phase three human trials and that is going to take it's a long true. time it's probably just a better idea to make sure the production facility facilities around the world are up to par and then you just license out the formula bill gates warned us about this shit six fucking years ago and i know that the cool thing to do right now is to hate on bill gates but literally bill gates has the most the most experience in global health in the entire world when it comes to facilitating moving of vaccines to underprivileged countries and um so i don't know everybody loves to hate bill gates but i i don't see it here Okay, next is gonna be Nacho. I'm gonna get in. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, looking into this just gave me more and more questions. Uh, so maybe me and Doctor Heem can can talk more about this since you've been talking about it a lot more. Um, my my knee jerk reaction, of course, when I started my uh, investigation into this topic, was uh, obviously America first. You know, I gotta be the the typical righty and just be like, yeah, screw them all, uh, America first. But then I look at more and more into like our relations with India and I can't help but think that this is a really good opportunity for us to sort of invest in India and in that relationship with them. And, and looking at it, looking back on the history of our relationship with India, it seems like one of our more valuable and probably more underrated uh, relationships with other countries. So, I mean, I would be all for like helping them make vaccines I mean, it's it's mutually beneficial from from more than one side. I mean, you also don't want they're having some of the first um, mutations of this that are really spreading fast, and uh, it could it would it could come back and bite us in the ass. So, if not anything else, at the very least, that that and then and then just the fact that we want to invest in one of the largest democracies that exists on the planet. Um, I say democracy loosely, but I mean they want to be a democracy. They're a, they're a uh, developing nation. And I think this could really come in uh, clutch for us in the future if we really had India on our side. So, okay, next is going to be shaved. God damn it! Um, that anybody who looks into the situation that's happening in India find it like really gut wrenching. It's like absolutely abhorrent seeing the fields of burning bodies um, and like just imagining the. Po the awful smell of like having to deal with this and working around them. And it's not just like a part of their relig like their their religious practices. Like they're having to do this. It's not um, like they are just choosing to. Um, if it's actually a complicated topic, as like a more libertarian or even like an anarchist or anti-statist, but like. I think that U.S. hegemony is pretty all right, and that if we can like help India, um, and like not like ignoring the fact that we should do it out of like a humanitarian principle, um, I think that helping India, especially in this time mm. of competition with other global powers, would help continue sus and, and sustain U.S. hegemony around the world. Um, even if like I would prefer eventually a world without that, I think right now it, it might be a good thing. Um, I also, Dr. Heem, not sold on just suspending IP protections. Um, as someone who really hates intellectual property law and thinks it's pretty gosh darn cringe, um, I don't know about just like ch picking and choosing when we're going to enforce it. Elon Musk said it really, really well a couple years ago when he was asked like, why don't you patent your, um, why don't you patent your rockets or like any of your rocket technology? And he, his response was, well, our competitors are other world governments, so the enforceability of those patents is pretty suspect. Um, I think that we can achieve like the same amount of like humanitarian effect um, or a greater one by just like you said licensing it anyway, perhaps at a like 
a better cost or like securing some kind of agreement with them for a, a, a future relationship. Um, yeah, I think we should help them. And in the future, I think uh, last night I had a discussion with someone. They're like, well, the, in the future, there'll be a labor market and a consumer market for us as well if we want that. So. Okay, next is going to be Demon Mama. Hit me, Demon Mama. Let's go. I'm so ready. Listen, okay, Dr. Hamed, I love you, but um, if there's one group of people in the world who are louder than the people who don't like Bill Gates, it's the people who like Bill Gates. No, no. Oh, come on. Come on. You are. This is this is 100. I'm sorry. I know this is my opening statement, but like the the fact that you are like surrounded by a bunch of online lefties, and then you're like, that's everybody. When Bill Gates literally has a massive charity that does that he that it spends millions of dollars plastering his name over everything. Now this guy's got it. He doesn't need another person to defend his poor feelings. So listen. so listen, I, I'm not a I'm not a Bill Gates like. Uh, uh, stand. yeah yeah. But on this panel, but you I, have been. I, okay, so. sorry. Go ahead. It's really uh, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Don't worry. I know you're not like a Bill Gates stan. Uh, I'm, I'm busting your chops a little bit. But I do think that a lot of people, um, because Bill Gates has like a, a vested interest in this, he claims expertise that he sort of generated himself. Like uh, Bill Gates has claimed expertise on a lot of things. People think that Bill Gates invented Windows. He didn't. He had a team of people that did it and he happened to own the rights at the end of it. Like, come on. Like the problem is, is that uh, – IP law is not the way to to ensure safe production. In fact, it arguably puts us in a worse condition because right now the way this, this, the way that it is right now is companies that can't afford to um, to immediately make a deal with these corporations um, often I'm sure to great expense are in a position where they can't move forward. If you release the patent, that means that you can start moving forward with those uh, with those pre-made safe standards with the the standards for manufacturing and i will even go one further because i advocate that the united states should a refuse to uphold those patents and those uh, those intellectual properties and should be publish for the world manufacturing uh, um investigation or inspection standards and um, their own recipes for a universal uh, vaccine as as information comes out. I think that would be amazing. Keep in mind, and I know you know this because I know you're it, you work in medicine. The number one thing that we need to do is get as many people vaccinated as safely and as quickly as possible. So yeah. it is in our interest to not buy into the um, not buy into the very very biased perspective of people who are very interested in allowing corporations to control uh, basically everything. But um, specifically medicine, we shouldn't just assume that they're coming from a place of good faith. Bill, Bill Gates has his own agenda. He has his own interests. He's very much a corporatist. He very much believes in pre preserving corporate hegemony or sorry, corporate sovereignty over their IPs. But this is not an issue of IPs or of money. This is a world that we could end up with a disease that circles around for years. We just need to put that aside and we need to take proactive action instead of constantly being on the back foot. And we've been on the back foot for a year in this. So that's my statement. Okay, so I'm going to do something. And I've never, I don't ever do this because I have the integrity of the hippy dippy round table means a lot to me. But since it might be the last one, because again, I hate everybody, um, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a grenade in here. I'm going to allow somebody on here. Okay. I'm going to allow somebody on here. I don't usually do this because it kind of messes up the balance a little bit. But why not? Okay. Got it. Uh, next is going to be CTV. And I need to use the bathroom. I'm up to Baltimore, isn't he? CTV, it's your turn. Okay, can can you can everybody hear me or? Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Yeah. I'm waiting yeah. on everybody else to you know understand that I'm supposed to have the floor right now. I don't know. What? Talking about? What are we talking about? Vaccine. It's India, right? Oh. I think there's uh, shit. It, it. It's got to be somebody big. It's right. either destiny. It's either destiny or Vosh Can or Hassan. Hegemony. 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 Right. Hegemony. All right. Hegemony. Hegemony. Hermione. Right. The dog money. Dog money. Anyone? Nobody else. All right. Frankly, yeah, 
an outstanding thing for us to do. And I'm not even frankly, um, it's definitely I guess hoping it's India first Play against that. There's large bits of manufacturing that's got to get I done. Really I really just I really don't want probably is still a substantial portion of the American population that sees the vaccine as as potentially maybe right, I gotta not pee while he's doing to this. participate I, I gotta, might find it a little suspect, silly. right? So, you know, instead of say holding on to a supply that people might not be using, uh, then you know obviously we should be pushing that out and and getting more people around the world participating if they wish right but beyond that uh relationship with india is a good thing as you know alluded to the conversation that he and i had is that 1.6 billion people is an obvious market there uh and having relationships with with that country just for the the market capabilities for potential labor business investments all of these things are great, especially when you have a player on the stage like China that has the population densities that they have, you know, announced goal of being the global power by 2050, right? So at the end of the day, especially when it comes to economics and, and money, uh, population and market size are, you know, is a very real thing to consider. And, you know, India just has a, a shit ton of people, right? So. And I think we should help them out. Okay. Uh, quick thing. Now, this is a nine-person panel, I guess, now. Uh, again, it's the last one, so I'm dropping all standards. Uh, but uh, so just to be clear for everybody, if it's nine-person, that means it's going to be more difficult for me to moderate. And I already uh, am, am leaving septic shock, so let's all acknowledge that a little bit and do our best to follow the rules, okay? Destiny, I don't need to explain the normal rules to you. You're used to them, right? You know the rules? Just don't shout over other people? Uh, just basically, like, if I speak up, I'm just moderating, get quiet, basically, right? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. So we're going to keep going around the room. So next it's going to be, who hasn't, sorry, the, the Here we camera's go. all just changed. So who hasn't speak, uh, spoken yet? Can you raise your hand? Of course it is. Harris, too, I think. Uh, okay, so we're going to go Maddie, Counterpoints, Aris, and Destiny, okay? Maddie, you're first. And let's try to make these intro statements a little shorter because we're running short on time. You are muted. Great statement. Shit, mother. Okay. Hi. Um, so I think that it's the ethically and just, uh, I think it's a good idea for the United States to provide um, more support in the way of not only opening up IP, of the vaccines, but also helping to provide some of the raw materials that are required in order to produce the vaccines, because that actually is one of the biggest blockers worldwide in um, ramping up production. And it's, you know, it's a little tough to he think about if you're a worker in India I know, and you Lonnie. are helping to manufacture the AstraZeneca vaccine or something else, knowing that all of that is then going to be exported out of your country, despite your country suffering and having countless people wish, die nah. because they don't have access it is an area where the united states can be a leader and go in and help the uh indian government more widely distribute vaccines that's also a way we can help them more widely manufacture vaccines um and especially with the increased um influence of the chinese government internationally this is a great place for us to um, emerge as a oh, leader I know. and build that relationship because that's something we're going to have to pay closer attention to going forward. Okay, next is going to be Eris. Hey. Um, so just in general, I mean, to my knowledge, there is a vaccine surplus, um, but I'm not too educated on like the ins and outs and like pragmatically on getting the vaccines um, to India. No, but you're right. in you're regards right about to the helping out India, like I'm pretty right wing when it comes to uh, refresh immigration. everybody. Refresh. And if anyone here is like you know against the legal, so I should have said illegal immigration, um, then you would be very concerned in general with issues that are going on globally, and uh, like 
Um, and this issue in India is going to cause so many other problems and it's going to just cause like a domino effect of, you know, what's going on around the world. And it's just going to lead to more, you know, um, uh, refugees, illegal immigration and just tons of other problems around the world. So it just makes sense to try to help India as much as possible, especially considering the amazing position the U.S. is in because, yes, you know, so many Americans don't even yes. want vaccines. So, you know, why not, you know, try to help out other people? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> OK, next is Connor. Everybody said the same thing, uh, so I'm going to say, Dylan, if you end the hippy dippy, I am going to come up there and I'm either going to show you a really good time or a really bad time, depending on what we end up doing. So that that's pretty much half my statement. Um, the, the other half of the statement is basically like, yes, when mm. you're on an airplane and the oxygen cuts out or whatever, you're supposed to put the mask on yourself before you help other people. So America first instincts right there. However, that being said, you're also supposed to put oxygen on other people so they don't get fucked over. Um, there's a whole bunch of regional um, and geopolitical reasons to do this. Uh, China is a competitor using India to offset, creating a strong alliance. Uh, India is technically another colony from, uh, you know, the UK or the Anglosphere. Um, so we share languages, some cultural traditions, some governmental traditions. Um, there's a whole host of reasons to help out our good, our, our good buddies, India. Um, and I'll yield right there. Okay, uh, now it's going to, oh, and again, it's not like I want to end hippy dippy. I just, I love the format. I love the mm. show. I just hate all of the people involved. That's all. I love you. Is that not enough? No, it is not. We're going to throw it over Destiny to Destiny. loves you enough to be here. Is that not enough? No, it does not. Because he did have an opportunity to come here, and he and he did this. He chose the other show instead of this show. He did not have a bad And boy, now he's right. asking last second, like always. I didn't know the other show This was ain't the prime there. times royale, okay? Bit. You can't just come in and come out like anywhere. We're not like a fucking bar. We're not like a fucking open whorehouse where you can just come in at any time, Okay. Hey. Okay, Dil Dylan, you know damn well that the abusive relationships sometimes have the better sex. So Destiny is just priming you metaphorically, not literally, for just like an abusive emotional relationship. So you know the sex is going to be better later. You know what? I don't think he needs to prime me for that. I already have that with all my panel guests, okay? I'm going to throw <laughs> it over to Destiny now. Uh, okay, what, just what is the exact question so that I know? Because I hear Basically, a lot of Basically, the, the exact question was should we like – should we help India? It's a question of America first versus the international, but it's basically just swave, like swerved over to the patent thing immediately. Okay, yeah, because there are two fundamentally different questions. I think that we should help India in any way, size, shape, or form, um, but, but I think that the, the patent conversation and then like people obsessing over like Bill Gates' answer to it, I think is a massive red herring. Um, like even if we did release not only the patent, but all the other parallel technology that would take them years to get up to speed, um, the patents themselves won't help them with anything. They don't have the manufacturing capacity or capability to make these vaccines. And the, the biggest issue is that if you did open, if we found a way to get through all of the tech, tech, the technology, all of the manufacturing errors, all of the transfer of like actual knowledge for producing these vaccines, if we found a way to do all of that, if any part of that process was messed up and there was any issue with any of these vaccines, you would continue to fervor like this. This really rabid anti-vax like idea that has like taken over the world where people are like canceling vaccines because of like minor problems and stuff and that would just like exacerbate that issue as well so no. yes we should be helping india in any possible way we can uh, whether that means subsidizing That's or paying okay. for you know vaccines that we're sending over or whatever but uh the the patent question is like a really big red herring i think i don't think it's like really relevant to this conversation at all okay so again there's nine people here so i'm gonna be a little like i don't know a little like dictator over here okay little Francisco Franco, a little Tito, a little something, okay? So I need you all to please follow the rules. Now it is open to the floor, but he to raise his hand out first, so I'm just going to pass it to him. All right. Um, okay, so just a couple of things to respond to. Maddie, you said that, uh, and this isn't just you. I'm not just trying to pick on you. I also saw many people on Twitter saying this as well, that how do you think the people in India feel when they're, export when they're making life-saving medication and exporting it across the world? That is not happening anymore. They've stopped exporting, okay? They're completely using everything domestically now. And the manufacturing um, uh, the manufacturing CEO, the CEO of the manufacturing plant, he said, we use exports as a source of rev uh, uh, generating revenue so that we can continue to expand our manufacturing. As they, they just don't have the money to be able to expand their manufacturing fast enough to be able to ramp up production. So it's kind of like a balancing thing where it's not necessarily bad to export because it's a fantastic form of raising revenue. So that's the first thing. The second thing to, to piggyback off of what Destiny said 
this has been one of my major concerns as someone who is in um so my 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 field of study is in radiation physics and radiation protection in, in particular mm -hmm. i have been trained to think of the worst case scenario what destiny brought up is the worst case scenario if one of these vaccines a batch of them let's say god forbid kills a thousand people or something you can literally set back the entire vaccination movement by decades I disagree with we're this. at a point where because this. the vaccine issue is such a hot topic right now it's very important that things are done carefully that safety corners are not cut and again to, to just go back to what i was saying before it seems to be the case that when manufacturing facilities are up to par these corporations license it out because obviously there's a comp there's a competition obviously the uh moderna j and uh, j uh, pfizer all of these uh corporations want to be the first ones in india want to dominate the market share yeah so and it's that's not, not as though good. they're like no we're too good to uh we're too good we don't want yeah, to on their people, terms on the their terms that i've been seeing a lot of that oh these companies don't want to help poor people i no, even see lefties that. saying that it's for population control like we need to fucking it, it, this is turning into blue anon shit yeah so except, except okay really but but you don't need to straw man listen to alex you, jones you don't need to straw man i first of all i've never seen it like i've never seen a single lefty argue that like it's because they're trying to do population control i'm sure there's probably some of them but nobody on this panel has done it so i don't think we need to like summon some okay, random... nobody on this panel yeah of okay, course not on this panel yeah but but it, this I, is no one but... like no serious comment yeah, no person has said that like, i don't know I, 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 there's there's a feeling of, of like, like hang on, sorry. it sounds like you're it sounds okay. like you're out okay. okay okay Okay, we're gonna uh, you're gonna give you about 30 seconds to finish it and yeah, then it's gonna go some while. Okay. Okay, yeah. So yeah, basically I think it's crazy that some people are saying okay. that um oh how can we trust these corporations? We should let co governments all over the world set their own safety standards. I think this is absolutely ridiculous. I think Western scientific safety standards are fucking the best in the world, and I am not willing to cut any sort of corners that to to p potentially cause a catastrophe. Nobody said anything about cutting safety procedures. Well, when in you, fact, when I you, said no no no. No, 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 hold on, hold on. You had your turn. Yeah. Now it's my turn. So, um, when you say you're you're conflating multiple issues in order to, I don't know. I, it feels like you're kind of like rooted in on this particular, uh, like the Bill Gates thing. Um, I don't know. Like I, this is this is the thing we had a little back and forth about that. I recognize the question is is much broader. I do think that the IP question is probably not the most important part of all this however but it's turned into the main discussion um well that's because that, that's, that's you that's point. you though and now what you're doing in this particular part is you've merged two different concerns which is safety standards nobody has ever advocated no. for safety standards in fact i explicitly advocated that what we should do is we should choose to be the leaders on this and we should publish the most the most accurate and up-to-date um it re regardless of any of any ip concerns the most safest manufacturing the most safest ins inspection procedures and we should give that to other countries now the concern i do have with ip enforcement being an issue is that while i agree that corporations do want to distribute their vaccine they do want to go into countries because they can make money that that of introduces course, yeah. that introduces a major profit incentive that we don't have to deal with if you waive the ip and you say this is a global emergency we're not going to enforce you being able to sue another country and i want to bring in another thing a historical example that we have in the past you say that somehow i don't know how you've tied these two things together that waiving the ip protections for it would somehow undermine people's faith in vaccines no that's not true at all we're no, gonna... no, that's not what i said that's that is what you said that is what you said that was the on, argument you made I said if the, okay the, i know but I you can't run the right, heemed, 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 that, that, respect okay, you get, 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 that, okay so i'll give him 10 seconds to clarify what he meant then I, 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 Dima, I specifically said if you waive the ip and a catastrophe happens where a vaccine batch of vaccines is unsafely made i didn't say waving the ip alone. of course if you waive the ip and the vaccines okay. are flawless uh, that, okay that, okay nothing would the happen. ip will, is is irrelevant to that discussion if a disaster happens as we've already seen guess what ip law was enforced when the j and j disaster happened and and i can tell you firsthand right down the street from me there are copies upon copies of the epic times with with their oh the j and j vaccine is killing people that is a problem that is separate from ip it has jack shit to do with ip ip has nothing to do with manufacturing disasters in fact but i will say that there are some ways in which the ip 
could impede us avoiding manufacturing disasters, but I don't think the IP has anything to do with manufacturing disasters. Manufacturing disasters are going to be used by bad actors all over the place. In fact, that's why we should commit, as the United States is one of the most powerful and most advanced medical countries in the entire world, that we should commit to making sure that no disasters happen, regardless of what that means, even if it has nothing to do with IP or else. But the problem is that as it stands right now, part of the problem that we're encountering, hence why we've can why Joe Biden considered to waive the IP, is that people can't start working on manufacturing these things when they're at risk of being sued. Now you can have that happen. Do you want to know what would be do you want to know what would be worse of a disaster if we have what happened during the Spanish flu, which is that vaccine shortages um and and medicine shortages during that time were so rare that you had random doctors brewing up their own vaccines completely illegally and under the table. I would rather have it above the table and just not have corporations being able to strong arm their own influence over other countries. And that would be infinitely better. Now, so yeah, real quick on that. So Moderna already said they weren't going to- Matty, I wrote your hand. I wrote your name down. Oh. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so yeah, real quick. So we're talking about exporting safety standards to other countries. We're not exporting like how to make the perfect like Wendy's square cheeseburger. Exactly. Um, you can't, you can't, you can't just export these things. There's like only so many people in the world that even know how to operate these machines that only right. so many companies in the world can even manufacture. Sure. Um, and there are like shortages of this talent, even within these companies. Sure. Like even Moderna needs more of these people oh, to do it. So okay. the idea that we can just like and, undo and a patent, I don't need you to say, okay, after everything I say, I know I'm correct. I don't need you to reaffirm it. I don't know why you keep saying, okay, after everything uh, wait, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm like just wondering what I'm your sorry, point I'm not, is. I'm not, you had your turn. I'm just talking. So the idea, well, the point is that you specifically said we should export safety standards to other countries. You can't do that. I'm telling you that you have a fundamental misunderstanding of how this technology works and how it's applied because we can't just export the safety standards to other countries. This isn't just a matter of intellectual property. It's a matter of human capital. It's a matter of like the actual know-how to operate these manufacturing plants and these machines. It's like okay. some of the processes for this are, are incredibly complicated and you can't just say like, oh, well, here you go. Now you have the technology to go and do it. If that was true, Everybody around the world would be making the Moderna vaccine. They're not. The patents aren't stopping anybody. Like, in order to file a patent, you already have to disclose how the technology works. Moderna's done that. It's not like there are people out there making the vaccine anyway. The whole patent question is just a giant red herring. All of the manufacturing on these vaccines are moving as quickly as they can, and all of the plants are totally tapped out in the manufacturing as it's happening. And the idea that just because some mistakes have happened so far, if other huge vaccine mis mistakes were to happen because these were being made in an unsafe manner in another country, becomes irrelevant is absolutely not true either. Just Wait, I never said that it was happened, irrelevant. You did. You said no, that I did not. I said it was irrelevant to the question of IP. Always, if you're gonna, if not, you're gonna take it contest, relevant. it is relevant. It is relevant. Because it's not relevant to the question of IP. So you were misleading and saying that, well, there's what already misleading? been Johnson and Johnson. I'm trying to explain, but you won't shut the fuck up and let me. So oh, you nice. were already saying like, oh, Man, well, you're really already free. super there. mad, aren't you? Okay. Okay. Wait, okay. Any, I understand. Like a, Wait. Okay. I understand yeah. that you two are dating and well, going I'm out. No, no, I'm just trying to make my point. Yeah. I think, let me, let, you got to let me finish. That's okay, the, yeah, go ahead. can't complain about not letting me finish. Then not let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I understand you love each other very, very much. Destiny, you finish what you're saying, then I'll throw it straight over to Demon Mama. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. I didn't know this was a Destiny dating show. Um, Demon Mama, if you want to hop into my DMs after, feel free to. Um, but anyway, so you were saying earlier, <laughs> Not my type. Like, well, people are already using the uh, propaganda stuff on the Johnson & Johnson. Like this idea that like, well, some very, very minor mistakes have happened, therefore any mistake can be allowed is just absolutely not the case. Um, the transfer of, of capital needed to make these vaccines won't happen with anything related to do with uh, intellectual property. And if it were to happen, this would be on the scale of years. And as was already correctly stated by you earlier, Diva Mama. The most important thing is to vaccinate as many people as possible. That has nothing to do with transferring IP rights. Okay. And also, Demon we can't Mom? even. Oh, sorry, can I just say quickly? You're asking government. You're can't. trying to change no, I can't talk apparently. across the world when we can't even get basic workers' rights across the world to be standardized. So how okay. can you Demon have? Mama. Demon Mama. Wait, Dima, I'm sorry, but there's yeah, a, there's I mean, a I, I don't know. I, like, people. it's really funny. Like, I feel like I'm getting like a bunch of weird and and like like they're like interswitching between what arguments actually being made. Now, I I already agree that there are that the IP is not the biggest thing standing in the way. However, I think that there is um we've already agreed both Hemed and Destiny in this have 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 admitted that there is a big interest that corporations have in being able to be the ones who get to go in there and and manufacture that. I think that waiving the IP brings that out of the question, okay? So, but originally, of course, the question was not about the IP, and I would say that we should help in any way that we can. I'm not a doctor, but I do believe that um there's probably a lot of things that we can do, and I do believe and I also I don't think I don't 
agree or, or accept the idea that like exporting s uh, inspection or safety standards wouldn't help at all. In fact, co the core of Dr. Heem's argument is that American safety manufacturing and expertise is what we need to get everywhere else in the world. So like there's contradicting arguments going on. It's not a set of OSHA there's guidelines. I'm sorry. But I never said that it was. Not? I mean, I, is that supposed to be like your gotcha? Like yeah, I never. You're making I, it sound like like no, oh, I'm really no, standard. I'm really not. I just think well, that the like enforcement of well, those safety standards is important too. Yeah, but right? how do you? But how do you start the ball rolling on that? You have to if you have a, a process. If our processes for investigating, inspecting, and passing vaccines is so good, then we should certainly be able to give that away to other countries and get them set it's up. Not that it, great it is, though. Like we, okay, okay we, wait a second. But now, but thing. you're making a different. Wait, but you're making a different argument than he so Heem says okay. that ours is the best, Wait. but apparently we can't. Okay, I'm gonna go back into septic shock real quick. Okay, so D Mama's gonna finish their point, then we're gonna go to Maddie, and then we're going to go from there. Okay. Uh -huh. Wonderful, D Mama. My point is that yes, we should help India in any way imaginable. Uh, sure, I don't think the IP is the most important thing. I do think that there are ways in which the IP rules um, can be. Uh, uh, can, can perhaps hinder this. I don't believe that we should have IP and profit incentives stand in the way of our uh, response to this pandemic. It already has enough, and it's had disastrous consequences. Um, and yeah, um, there's a whole lot of other parts of this that we could discuss if we want to. So yeah, that's my point. Okay. Maddie, we're going to go to you. Uh, Nacho, I saw you raise your Destiny hand. Destiny is just so mad. He wants uh, to try and, and find a way to attack hand, me. But I, okay. Got it. He doesn't even Got know it. what he's arguing against. It's actually funny. On this idea of the plausibility of, oh, well, even if they release the patent, is that even going to change anything? Is that going to mean that this, this vaccine can go into production? And I wanted to just quickly point out that the uh, vaccines and medications that are made by generic pharmaceutical manufacturers that are safe and effective mm -hmm and normally have a much better cost benefit analysis as well like that's why they're way cheaper because they don't come with the brand name um that also has marketing and other things that are baked into that price tag so i think um important to remember that this isn't this isn't something that's new this is something that happens routinely with vaccines with mrna medication. vaccines are brand is new that there i'm not done no 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 you can have your turn i waited Sorry. throughout all of that so yeah, he's actually being a bit weird. Right another now. thing that I think is really important to oh, well. point out is that there were taxpayer dollars used in the development of these vaccines. So I don't know that it's necessarily the right call to then have all of the proceeds and profit coming from those vaccines going to private manufacturers, because that's another thing that we have to consider, especially as those uh, manufacturers ramp up worldwide distribution. Um, and then lastly, I, despite thinking, you know, my position is that I think the, the vaccine patent should be released and made um, open to other manufacturers. However, I think we won't see any meaningful change in the vaccine distribution worldwide, I especially agree, in um, developing countries until there's the question of I do, equitable I distribution and what that might look like. So even if we were to ramp up production, that doesn't always necessarily translate into equitable distribution. And that I think is going to have a much greater impact on making sure that we get the world vaccinated. Okay, we're gonna go over now to Nacho. That's a great point, Nacho. I just wish I could hear it. <laughs> so just pointing out basically the uh, reiterating some things and just adding, like, we already asked this question, like, why don't, why aren't all, all pharmaceutical companies like producing vaccines is because it's a very, it's a very, because he hates process. my guts. Like, that's why we're already basically at our capacity for like how many uh, vaccines we can produce. So like in order for us to, to, to do this in other places, and even if we, like we lifted the patent, we would then have to bring people over there away from the facilities where they're already manufacturing these things at capacity. Everybody's being worked to the bone, like already, working as much as they possibly can so moving this somewhere else taking people away who are already maximizing the process here thanks uh, and potentially for the rest of the world um would just slow down that process so it doesn't really make sense i mean like i'm all for helping india but i just think that we already have an excess of vaccination so it would probably make more sense for us to keep producing excess and you know i, I don't know 
Okay, next is going to be counter. Uh, and then we're going to probably try to drop the hand raising, but I saw two people raise their hands. So I'm going to go to CTV because he hasn't spoken forever. Then, uh, so, so I understand. Basically, maybe I could get some clarification here. This is more posed as a question than a challenge. Um, so I actually had to look up like a historical example, uh, which was the uh, polio vaccine was uh, left unpatented. It was given away for free. Uh, the person who uh, created it basically said that it was better for the world to have it than for everybody to not have it. Um, and I understand that they're basically like maybe we're at capacity for qualified manufacturers of uh, vaccines right now. Um, but at the same time, uh, one of the things that's been repeated previously uh, throughout this entire pandemic was that this is going to be with us for decades to come. Uh, COVID is very potentially going to be similar to uh, the flu, where we're going to have like annual se annual COVID seasons. It'll kill less people, but it will be around uh, I know, going, Vermin, going it forward I'm and so, so that's kind of my thing where uh maybe in the short term releasing ip doesn't make sense um but maybe in the long term it does and maybe building up uh these well it's not showing uh, through here 85 of, uh, Derek, it just seems angry. Have geopolitical effects so for instance if we export this uh, technology to india and then they sell it to china and then they sell it to europe and like all that kind of stuff um th there's going to be a whole bunch of geopolitical leverage that we lose um, but there's also a whole bunch of geopolitical leverage that we gain uh, by being selfless with our intellectual property. Um, so I, I wanted Agreed. to pose that more as a, as a question. Challenge is what do we lose by opening this up to the world with the understanding that if you manufacture this shit yourself and you kill your own citizens, that's kind of on you. We just gave you the patents, the ideas, and the standards that we follow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give it the CTV and then Destiny, and then we're dropping hand raising it back to open format. Okay, so Stephen Mama, the reason why you can't just have like, you know, these federal government rules be able to, if you do this right here exactly like this, we're going to ship the idea out for you to be able to do the exact same thing, right? It doesn't work. Practical example that I'm about to get, give you C of the same class of submarine and all of them had shit that was a little bit different about all of them imagine trying to set up a business even though you're going to be manufacturing one thing resources in the area it doesn't have the same say electrical supply it doesn't have the same the building materials it doesn't have all the same things so this is like you have this one this is how you do this but then when you get down on the field and you try to do it, this is why shipping that idea just it doesn't work. This is where, like, you can have some guidelines, but it just doesn't work, right? So for the rest of it, kind of lost now. So Destiny, kick it off. <laughs> yeah, one second, though. For everybody in chat, tell me to call this person or that person. Uh, I know how to do my job. Please sit in your seat, okay? Destiny, continue. Um, just for a couple things that were brought up. So manufacturing generics is something that companies can do. mRNA vaccines are a cutting edge, brand new technology. So these are some of the first mRNA vaccines in the world that have been produced. The way that we manufacture these is not like a well understood science such that everybody in the world is ready to just switch over and do it. So we can't just make generic versions of these vaccines like we could like with other drugs. Um, it, it, like it is a very new technology. Um, in terms of like tax dollars have gone into manufacturing these, um, like different companies have taken like different levels of money at different stages of like distribution but like most of the research and development for this has all been like fronted by capital like from private companies um the idea that it's like been a whole bunch of public research or whatever that's gone into developing those vaccines is not necessarily true um when people are talking about like what's the harm in releasing like the ips or all the technology related to this um i mean technically if you do it right there's not really a harm but there would need to be like an enormous cash transfer that happens to these companies if that happens because pharmaceuticals are a very 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 risky business and if we were to just go in and when somebody stumbles upon like a really effective treatment to just completely deprive them of the ability to make money for that you are like putting uh, potentially like a huge harm in the way of the pharmaceutical industry and like the public private partnership that happens with pharmaceuticals is probably one of the best examples we have of like public private partnership and we probably wouldn't want to harm that type of innovation that occurs in the us can, can i can i respond as well okay so also i just the um it, i looked this up because a lot of people were saying why can't we just publicly fund uh, vaccine and medicines and all this shit only one out of five thousand drugs actually make it to market i don't think that we want to waste our taxpayer money 
on 4,999 failed projects to get one successful one. It's better that private capital that goes. I, I don't know why are you making that face, Demon Mama. Wait, this I mean, is a fact. Wait, wait, that's that's silly. You're saying that. <laughs> You're saying that 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 we shouldn't that that we should take advantage of pr of p private capital, which makes a lot of money, but despite the fact that medicine, yeah, because they can, wait, no, wait, because they can take tons of risks. Wait, they wait, they wait, can afford wait, wait, to lose. Heemed, heemed. You asked her a question. Like, yeah, yeah. Question. I, I mean, Heemed, look, I understand. Like, I don't know. Like, we can talk about this another time too. Like, yeah, it feels like talk it feels like you're obviously. super mad like about it, and I don't really entirely get it because like, look. Wait, hold on. What did Heemed say? That was super mad. Just respond to his point. No, I, he literally one, he's I been jumping all over me the entire time. Okay, just okay, like okay, they're okay, doing okay, it again. Okay, okay. okay, well, let me. Okay, <laughs> I don't care what you're gonna do off here. Please ask the question. Yeah. Okay. So my question was, when, oh, you I was talking to Demon Mama. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. When, sorry. Demon Mama. Okay. Okay. There was there was a question. Like you, like I don't. Remember you what asked the question why was. was she making the face, and then she was answering that, right? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Sure. I I I was reacting okay. and and was going to wait my turn to respond to you. I don't think that the argument that. Um, oh, well, it takes lots of tries to come up with something. Therefore, the private industry should do it. In fact, no, like th this is th part of the problem that we have is that we don't have investment um, in uh, in risky drugs that would be beneficial to society. In fact, they could be so beneficial. It would just be an abstracted value. I think that um, there's, a, there's a lot to be talked about with regard to how public private uh, stuff works um, and I don't know. There's a lot of that there, but I think that uh, to to sort of respond to all the things we've been talking about here, if we can all admit here that the mRNA vaccines are brand new, that they're not, nobody's cutting edge yet. That's all the more reason to remove every single roadblock that we can to getting them all over the world. Vaccinations benefit all of us, so we want to get as many people capable. Wrong. Excuse me, pa capable of 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 producing them as quickly as possible that's what we want and that goes for any vaccine now i would go further we're not having this discussion here but we could any other time about how we go about developing researching and developing um medicines i disagree with the idea that like that that like because there's a lot of trial and error in it that it's necessarily an unproductive or or um or non-profitable venture it obviously is otherwise pharmaceuticals wouldn't be billionaire billionaires that's ridiculous the idea that just because it's that it's high risk means that you can't do it via other structures there's a million ways to approach this that doesn't have to be just private and there are downsides of private of of, re, of relying exclusively on private um investment for example rare conditions don't tend to have a whole lot of private investment because those would not be profitable so there's some issues with that and i know you're getting i could tell you're like i don't know what you're melting down about but like i feel I'm like melting you're down because you're you're basically you're, I, you're basically agreeing with me but disagreeing at the same time no wait you're you interrupted that... me to question me like you're the one who's been disagreeing with me so what it seems like is like you disagree well, okay. with me as a person and not anything that i'm actually oh, advocating for here no okay, well, come on you know okay. you know, wait, I, you know you, i love you demon you got, wait you got, i'm not saying like as a whole i'm saying in the context of this panel i know you i know you're not an asshole like i'm just saying that like you question okay. me so what okay. do you disagree okay. with me then if i'm saying okay, everything so my, agrees? my my initial point was that 4999 drugs Never make it past uh, human testing to make it to market. And I think that's a shitty way to use tax money. Tax money should be used in things that we can clearly fucking uh, point to it. Like there's so many other problems and there's only a limited amount of budget that can be used. So that's all. That's all I said. And so then like, when so, I said so that, like you more, made a weird face. Yeah. So a more a more formal declaration of this. So something that governments historically have problems with are picking winners and losers. Like it's a it's a problem with a lot of like more public funded models is that like in a in a private system, like capital can respond like much more quickly to like winning and losing situations. But on a public model, trying to pick out like which medications are going to be the winners is not going to be very effective. Um. You know, like we might say here, like oh well, privately there's not going to be much incentive to solve uh, for rare diseases. There's probably a greater chance chance that a rare disease is going to be cured in a private market because some you know like philanthropist makes it their pet project then us voting like democratically or having like a medical institution yeah but you're just asserting that excuse excuse me um please let me finish and no i'm not just asserting that this is just common sense for how markets work right <laughs> so what you can make it okay, common dumb, sense like, okay sure you want um well so i can explain like the actual incentives for sure you, right? please. so publicly if we yeah sure so 
publicly, if we are trying to throw money at all of these potential research projects, because we're trying to figure out which drugs or potential drugs we want to fund, we're probably not going to be voting to do this for the rarest conditions, right? If we imagine that the majority of us are voting and the majority of us have a stake in how this public funding goes, we're probably actually going to be even more driven towards solving the biggest diseases. So like 99% of our money is going to go towards things like diabetes or things related to dementia and Alzheimer's or things that are related to obesity. Like this is where all of our public funding is going to go. In a private system, you have like a higher chance of riskier drugs being explored because somebody thinks there might be some money to be made if they find it or from some philanthropist taking a pet project and then lending money towards people to go and solve that particular thing. Um, there are some things that I think that you're, you're correct about in that and some things that I think you're not correct about. I don't, I don't agree with the idea that like a, a public system would necessarily be worse. I think that we don't have the infrastructure for it right now because we've relied on a, on a private system, but a public system absolutely could identify How? what is neat. Hold on a second. Well, like there's a number of ways. First of all, like we have, we have other similar structures of this, such as like how we handle agriculture, right? Like people don't vote directly um on on like what agricultural rules and what e e ecological like decisions are made by the epa we have i, I just want to i want to say right now because agriculture is the worst example you could bring up because we actually throw away so much money into I, ag because I, we produce farm yes. goods that are just thrown right okay, away like if you look at the we're not thing, talking like, about the specifics what i'm talking about well, no, is no, that... but it's the it is literally the example that i would bring up to win my argument look at how okay. much money we throw away you're in not, agriculture you're and you're corn you're, you're getting really angry about something that's not i'm the not point. angry at all i'm just yeah. helping okay you're not i don't need any help because you're not actually talking Talk, you're not because you brought up an okay, example you're not me. talking okay. uh, you're not even touching on the same thing that i'm talking about it's like really weird you know it feels really weird it feels like there's like this this weird thing where you want Dylan, everything can we that make I a said. rule where demon mama can't just talk about how mad people are because it's like wait the wait, biggest wait waste of time. i'm really I'm wondering why why i'm, why okay, I'm getting we'll asked stop, direct okay, questions okay, and then getting interrupted wait wait, wait okay if okay. there's any if there's any rule i have made is that when i talk no one else talks okay so you hear that you don't hear anything that's because all of you in, in this room, the two brain cells that are in your head have yet to bang into each other. And when they do hit, it's going to sound like a pin dropping, okay? That's the current state I'm in. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you both 20 seconds to say something, and then we're going to throw it to basically the room. Uh, and if it's interesting enough, I'll let it go on. If it isn't, then I'm just going to give it to somebody else, okay? That's how we're doing this. Dear mommy got 20 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, look, there are all kinds of structures, some of them flawed, some of them not. But we can we can institutionalize these things. They don't have to be voted on directly. They can be done by appointees and in other institutions. That's that's all I'm saying. All right, I'm going to jump since you said it, it would was, be open to the floor. Wait, oh, can said I just destiny oh, yeah. counter. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if we There's the, there's the brain cell that yeah, forgot okay, to so hit the quick, other one. So done by appointees means that it's still ultimately an appointee of a publicly elected figure. If the sure. issue becomes a hot button enough topic, then of course these are going to become like issues that we are going to be indirectly voting on just like we indirectly vote on like our, you know, presidential cabinet and heads of our EPA and all those other things. Mm -hmm. Um agriculture, I just thought that was a funny thing to bring up because it's a good example of how government tries to pick and choose which crops are grown. We see huge issues going on with that in the United States when it comes to throwing away tons of money on corn because it's electorally popular to quote unquote support our farmers. So we like misallocate resources there. You see it happening in India, which we kind of were talking about earlier. In East India, a fuck ton of subsidization goes towards growing rice that's essentially thrown out into the trash can as well. Um, I, I think that some of these things are just better done on a private model. And I think that like the hi history shows that. Elbows thrown. Okay. No, that's not true though. He's just asserting the, that. It's the, common this sense. This is where uh, I think I can play the enlightened centrist yeah, and I answer hate this. both of your questions simultaneously. The, you can marry both of these interests. So I, I think it's kind of silly to think that the private market doesn't have some advantages and the public market doesn't have some advantages. One of the uh, one of the examples I would bring up is the military industrial complex. Uh, just like agriculture, it's an example in which billions or potentially trillions of dollars are thrown away on pet projects that don't necessarily yield immediate commercial products or immediate products that are benefit uh, beneficial to the nation. And yet we consistently do it because the public good is viewed as necessary um, and is so nobody counted for destiny. Everybody counted for me. Military that it's worth nobody it, counted uh, to, for destiny. Throw Everyone counted for me. Billions of trillions of dollars away on this public good uh, because it's just that necessary. Um, I would also argue that agriculture falls into a similar category for this, of course uh, because it will. agriculture is basically food security. If there's one thing that we all fucking need, it's food security. Because tomorrow, if uh, you know, basically the grocery stores didn't have any food on the shelves 
themselves, then uh, I'm pretty sure 70% of the people in this room would starve within two weeks uh, to death. So there's advantages to both the public research model, the private research model. The point is to hybridize these things. And I would argue that specifically when we're talking about COVID, uh, COVID is such a public issue that public funding, maybe that large cash transfer to these private corporations should be done for the benefit of the globe. The faster that we get these things sure. produced, the faster that everybody is inoculated, the faster the global economy opens back up, the faster the global economy opens back up, the more we can go back to work and then basically return to some semblance of normal yield so uh, i wanted to add in here this is this can be my little diet dunk on destiny because i think he forgot to mention like when he said something earlier about the research being publicly funded like in contested demon mama a, a lot of, if not most of the the research that was done on like crispr the rna the sars and all that stuff was off of the like all the the research that those companies did individually was off the back of research that was done through like universities etc so like true. we uh, we do benefit a lot from the from the research that we choose to invest in already so like i i don't know what more it's probably better to have these in the private sector where these these they can fine tune all these things where they can manipulate the crispr and the rna stuff to be able to to make something like the, the moderna virus and then also i just wanted to add in from er earlier like because you were saying something about that this brand new technology should be shared so that everybody can like we barely understand this already so th the fact that we would just spread it to to other countries and just allow them to like start toying with all with this virus and try to create and potentially create some like mutant version that would just spread throughout the rest of the planet and fuck us even more is like kind of mind-boggling like, I, I think we want to like keep this under wraps for now like and maybe in the future we could look if i can like, respond to that specific that. point which was responding to to mine like uh i think that there's there's an assumption that's being baked in here which is that like that we're the only ones who know anything about it we're not there are skilled ingenious doctors all over the globe that by opening this up we may be able to identify and i'm not saying just like literally take a gun and just fire out incomplete like this is i don't know i feel like we can't get like an actual like reasonable discussion about it but what like there are scientists all over the world who can contribute to this who could help make it better the the vaccines could be made better because there's more eyes on it there's more intelligence there's there's entire countries worth of skilled studied people who could contribute to this i think that that like this is a better approach towards medicine in general um and and so i just wanted to respond to that i'm not saying that like like the idea that like that like America's the only people who could have ever made a breakthrough on any virus or vaccine ever is just not true. In fact, I mean we are we're known for doctors coming over and contributing to us from overseas. Like that's a, a matter of our economic power, not that we're just like like by virtue of being born in America, brain geniuses. No, there's like there's lots of smart people all over the place who could contribute to this, Definitely. and it is a world problem. So just on, on top of this, so there just there's so many misconceptions about how you, any of this. You next. Okay, yeah, there's so many misconceptions about how many. So first of all, this idea that like there are all these people around the world that could contribute, um, probably not. Uh, there were other massive pharmaceutical companies that were trying to get vaccines to work, and people don't realize how many of these other massive pharmaceutical companies failed. The idea that there are all these doctors around the world that's like, oh well, if you just show me the machine, you know, like maybe I can chime in with my brilliant piece of code, like I'm in, you know, like some hackers movie or whatever. It's just not the case. Like we already have like the best people in the world that are in the position to work on this are not only working at this. They're working at it at capacity. Also, just to address, I hear this said a lot. Um, American Nacho brought this up. A lot of people will say things like the majority of uh, medical research is publicly funded, blah, 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 blah. We do not publicly fund treatments or therapies. That is not true. There is a lot of general research that happens, but taking that, gen that general research. Thank you research very much, Leal. Thank you in full after. Cure you. It doesn't cure you. You don't, you don't go to a hospital and get general research. You don't go to a hospital and get like something Thank that you, you know, like you, you, need a, you need an actual therapy or treatment, and these are privately funded. And and the big money sink that comes into funding these goes into all of the trialing that happens to get a drug from the general research ideas and principles that we establish at universities into an actual therapy that we can administer to somebody that has an acceptable number of side effects for an acceptable number of people that actually treats the disease that it purports to treat. And that entire process, in the United States at least, is privately funded, and it is incredibly expensive. It is incredibly arduous. It is incredibly risky. There aren't all these pharmaceuticals that make billions and billions of dollars and blah, 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 blah. You can go and look through the stock histories of any of these companies you can go and see how many of them start and how many of them fail um, the idea that like this is just some incredibly lucrative industry that all these people are becoming billionaires off of is not true again and to reiterate there are plenty of huge pharmaceuticals that tried to make vaccines for this and they failed Destiny, there are not quick, a ton of people around the world that know how to do this stuff. quick question are, are you aware wait, wait, wait quick question no it's a very serious I, question right now 
I just have a very quick question. Destiny, are you aware? So was I. Okay, with that. Oh man, that's the smartest thing I heard all day. Nothing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, it's quick. I bet it will be the smartest thing I heard all day. And believe me. Well, you know what, CTV? Boy, something out to You got five. You got five seconds. Five. Had to go when you reiterated that like uh, the the little mini dunk on on Destiny. That was great. What anyway, that was, no, no, was no, the fucking no, smackdown no, from the no. attempted. That's what happened. No, so. that's CTV. Okay. I'm gonna do something. I'm very disappointed. You've got a five minute timeout. I'm sorry, my guy. Five seconds. Five seconds. Not eight seconds. What a tragedy. Another conservative censored by the liberal elites. I'll give you a long to meet you in five minutes, okay? Okay, so Dima Mama, can you do the five second rule? No yeah, absolutely. Does uh, rule? Okay, Destiny, or, Destiny or anyone else on the panel, where was the first vaccine successfully developed? Tell me the country. I would love to know. Russia, um, I, I mean, I, I mean the US slash Germany, right? I think Russia. It was Germany. Destiny, it was Germany. Sputnik. It was Sputnik in Russia. Well, oh, perhaps. Sputnik. Perhaps it was Russia then. But regardless, it wasn't here. <laughs> this, it the, was, idea that, the, the idea that we're the American only ones company. with the brains is just so American centric. It's very, it's, it's very, American it's, it's very ridiculous. Supply chain for companies. You think that just because a supply chain is located in another country, that somehow that country owns that intellectual property, or somehow that country is the ownership of the production what's the, of the vaccine? I'm sorry, you just don't understand the issue of what's being discussed. That's not. That's not like, true. You're, you're you're claiming so, something so that's not Bi true. BioNTech works in partnership with. Pfizer and these okay. are the two people that jointly came up with a vaccine, but like sure. BioNTech Guess didn't what? come up with the where did, where, and Pfizer? where they're scientists working, huh? You're saying that this is a supply line problem. It's not a supply line problem. You're talking this about is, research. This, gonna, You're flying all over the place about things that are unrelated. Keep on point. I mean, if anybody wants to go read my Twitter, I post a lot of stuff for people that know a lot about vaccine. Yeah, everybody, go go follow it, Destiny's like, Twitter not, about it's this. Not, uh, it's, it's the best source. It's not source. a matter of just like flying somebody around and then showing you on the computer what buttons to punch in. To I'm, get the I'm right. Source my out. Twitter okay. page, please. Go to my Twitter page to show to be Maybe right. Friend. Okay, okay. So it was Heems. Thank so you. I'm gonna throw it to Thank you. Okay, so I, as someone who is currently taking part in public research, I, I think I understand pretty well the dynamics between public and private research. I am a PhD candidate. I make $4 less than minimum wage. I would never go into becoming a PhD scientist if I didn't know that I'm going to have future earnings as a possibility. The reason that uh, public funding of research is the way it is is because they take advantage of, of, of people like me because th there's just not that much budget. They'd rather give two PhDs $28,000 a year instead of giving one PhD $50,000 a year. So part of the reason why this and, and the research that I'm doing, which is noble, it's fucking fantastic. It'll contribute to the greater uh, it'll contribute to the greater knowledge of science. None of it will be practiced on patients because to practice it on patients requires so much money and so much uh, resources that that like public funding just doesn't have. OK, OK, so. Uh, uh... CTV has been let out early on good behavior and on uh, being white. So we're going to throw it first to uh, ah. Demon Mama. Thank you. Uh, sure. Yeah. If it was it something made directly to you. Because yeah, there's something that yeah, Destiny okay, said sure. that I, I just there's wanted to clarify. There's nothing like being mis... mis what, what is it when... So it's not misgendering, obviously, but it's myth, mis... mis uh, let the nacho guy talk. Why did we cut nacho off for this? Oh, oh, come on, God. let's go. Can we, let's go. Let's go nacho. Look come at on. this guy. Hold on, Nacho. I've been getting some damn Florida sun down here, right? Like, it's just getting yes, darker, right? Yes, Matter yes. of fact, yesterday I had somebody walk up to me and just start speaking he, Spanish. I, I'm sure I everybody right? asks you uh, all the great questions during Black History Month, and you are the M MLK of our time, but we're going to Nacho right now, okay? A POC card. Uh, so <laughs> I just wanted to clarify the point that, that I was making uh, that, that Destiny, like, touched on earlier. Uh, in that I, I know that the, the research... I want to clarify that the, the research that the, the pharmaceutical companies do and like their end product and all the stuff that they do with it and like they lose a ton of money and, and take a lot of risk, et cetera. Like, but they're the base research that they're building off of is publicly funded. Sure. Now, then when they take that research, when they take like the CRISPR and they take the other things like uh, they lose a lot of money investing, like just like you pointed out that were a lot of other companies trying to make vaccines and they lost out on it like a company could go bankrupt trying to find the next cure to whatever like cancer etc but they're doing it off of the back generally most of the time they're doing it off the back of some kind of like publicly funded research so i yeah, think our i don't know it's just to try to say that like 
our I was even bringing that up just to say that I think what we do with our public funding right now generally is pretty damn good. And the fact that the private companies are going to take all the risk um, is probably an, a net benefit for all of us. So. Demo Mama. Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple of issues. Like the, the, the fact. Also, that... wait one second. I need to use the bathroom desperately. Please, nobody break the rules while I'm gone. I'll be right back. Okay. So public funding being short and, and, uh, and, and being, it's like a huge, like, that's a huge problem that I agree with. Like, like we, we have a notorious problem in the U S of creating our own problems with funding. Basically what happens is Republicans get in office, they cut public funding to research, they cut public funding to health, whatever. And then when, when, the, when, and then when it, when it starts getting worse, they go, look at how bad it is. And then they justify that to cut further funding. This is like a, a known political topic. Like we, I know most everyone here has talked about this in the past when it's not having to do with whether it agrees with you in this particular context. Um, the fact that your experience with public funding is bad, like, I agree. Like, I would agree with you. I think we should give more public funding. We should f make these processes more efficient, and we should rely less on corporate interests that are extremely, extremely profit-driven. And while I agree that the private industry can sometimes or uh, like when private industries can sometimes respond faster, a lot of that is because they have no, um, they have no other uh, responsibility aside from making money. So they can dump an entire team of people who've been doing research. All that can go in the trash if they want it to, as long as they're making more money. And there are in our in our currently existing system, there aren't really like that doesn't quite exist for the public eye. But there's nothing to say that we can't build ourselves a a a a public investment structure that also says hey if we need to move quickly if something is failing and it's sucking up a lot of resources we can cut this thing and and that would kill two birds with one stone one it would make our public uh, our public structures more efficient and secondly it would cut out the profit incentive which is a huge issue in pharmaceuticals and there it doesn't matter the failure rate of small of mom and pop pharmaceutical manufacturers the fact of the of reality is that there are massive multinational multi-billion dollar um industries that do indeed have a profit incentive in what they choose to research this is an issue with rare forms of cancer that are unable to get any sort of attention because there is no backup so those things are very serious to uh, to, to talk how about how would you pick like so like let's say a company so like if we had a publicly funded company would you say like what so they're losing money for five years ten years then we just stop publicly funding them well no, I mean, if you're talking about, a, I'm not talking about a publicly funded company. Let's say that we expand the CDC and we have various, uh, let's say. No, but a, how do you pick and choose what research gets research? Wait, wait, you do that. We, we are, wait, we, we already do no, this. No, 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 wait, hold on. You want to do this hold, for hold, drugs, hold, not hold, general hold on a second, hold on a second. We can, we already do this in other publicly funded things. We can structure it to be better. You use the scientific method to identify which of these are, wh what are the statistics? What's the likelihood of success? Are we going to have a failure on this? Okay. Yeah. Obviously it's a complicated no, process, this, this, but, this, but wait a minute. Wait, hold on a second. So what, what we do, wait a yeah. second. It already costs money. It's just costing. But the private wait, companies are stop. Taking I know. I, I get it. I promise you. You don't need to. Like, holy shit. Yes, the private companies, they both get to benefit from it. They make a lot of money from it, and they take those risks. Now, if we say, hold on a second, we recognize that a medicine is a public good that we probably shouldn't have built into the profit motive. You say, okay, here's what we allot for funds, and we use the scientific method as as companies do internally. Please, please stop saying the scientific method. You're, you're we, killing they, me. What, also, what, what, what do you mean? They also pay for law. Well, you're actually killing them. Them. Wait, what the fuck do you mean I'm killing you? The scientific method. Wait, this is so stupid. Like, this is so fucking dumb. This is like the dumbest, this is the dumbest panel I've ever been on because. No. Okay. Ooh, that was real close too for the second person. Okay, Dima Mama, please finish your point. Ah, thank God. Like what I'm talking about is there are all kinds. Of, okay, there are all kinds of ways. Like I mean, listen, I, I I don't work for a research company, but listen, I know for a fact, and I know D Dr. Heem can't can't look at me in the, the straight face and say that there aren't already existing peer review methods that are sometimes enforced privately, sometimes enforced publicly. There's a hybrid of these that it, which allows us to determine the validity, the success rate of various things. If you make that a public a, a public enterprise with the goal of being the public good, you you take out the profit incentive, but the government maintains it. The people involved in it maintain their incentives they're still being paid because the government would be able to fund it better and the government has the has the goal of 
generating medicines that will help the most people possible. There's just not a profit incentive for private interests. Now, are there potential roadblocks in that? Yeah, I'm sure there are. There's all kinds of things, that, it, nitty gritty that we'll have to figure out. But removing that profit incentive is really, really big. And the benefit that you get back, that the people who are doing the investment, the people who are doing the research, they get paid well with a nice public job. And the public gains the benefit of reliably getting resources uh, or, or, or vaccines or medicines that will help them. That's the payoff. And in the long run, the government, the nation, the society, the planet gets the benefit of not having people die, which as it turns out, people being sick and dying is super, super expensive. It's just an abstracted economic value. And I, we know for a fact that companies and governments alike already calculate to some degree um, like the impact of diseases and downtime and deaths on their economy. We can just do this as well, but adjust our calculations so that we figure out what the actual value of producing these vaccines are, of producing these medicines are for the public. Okay, so thank you. Who wants to respond to that? I, I know counter I got does. It. I got okay, it. Okay, anyway, okay, counter. Okay, so you guys Jesus are talking Christ. past each other a little bit. I've already brought it up. It's fine. That's because I don't have a capitalist jerk off or a socialist jerk off impulse. So we already do this. Just we do this with the millet. Sorry. <laughs> have normal masturbatory impulses. Okay. Um, so my normal masturbatory impulses are telling me that we already do this. We do this with the military, military industrial complex. And there's actually a really great quote that I fucking hate. Um, and it's basically the world will not know peace until the money dedicated towards weaponry is dedicated towards livingry. I hate this quote because I'm not a fucking hippie, but it's a great goddamn quote. So basically what you can do, because I, I worked in logistics, so I understand the military industrial complex, R&D budget that rotates throughout the year. You hire a bunch of private entities that know that they're going to get a minimum contract. These companies you already know, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Pratt & Whitney, a whole bunch of mega corporations who can count on the United States government for billions of dollars every single year. Thank and you, they Zem know Appreciate that it. their engineers and their employees also, and their administrators Leah, and all that thank kind of you stuff so much. are going to be employed year after year after year after year. Those people make not phenomenal salaries. They're not making do they're not making like uh, you know doctor salaries, but they are making living salaries. And on top of that, they will grow and shrink in response to actual conflict. So there is a certain amount of the population that is on the chopping block. Now there's problems that Destiny alluded to, which is basically waste. There is a fuckload of waste. So uh, the F thirty five, I want to say over its like ten year lifespan, is going to end Thank up costing so trillions of dollars. Um, I want to say that they spent like 1.3 billion just developing a helmet, but at the same time, these R&D projects are going to pay off in the future because they're already building augmented reality off of the 1.3 billion dollar helmet, and they're also building the next generation of stealth fighters. Uh, those are probably the UFOs that you see in the sky right now. So the, all of this being said, these massive public investments do pay off long term, and just because they're wasted doesn't mean they're wasted. Uh, final point before I yield. Uh, so, for instance, we brought up how Actually, inefficient thanks, our Connor. agricultural systems are. They are inefficient, but as a result, everybody inside the United States of America, except for two weeks during the COVID scare, basically knew they know that their grocery store will be stocked. Barring some weird natural disaster, they will have food access. There are some public benefits that outweigh, uh, you know, basically private interest. And I would say de um, destroying a deadly disease that has frozen the global economy Thank you, Connor. is not just a public interest for the United States. It's a public interest for the world. So we can get into fucking nitty gritty about fucking logistics, research, mRNA versus what, whatever. But basically that's the North Star. And you could basically create a health industrial complex the way you have a military industrial complex. Yield. Agreed. 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 Thank you, Connor. I don't think anybody thinks there's anything wrong with public-private partnership. I think that the example that the U.S. sets is really, really, really positive of that. Um, yeah, I don't disagree. We'll talk about that after Zoom Zoom Bang. Okay, is, is everybody... You're an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there you go. Okay, so is that everything on this topic? Uh, CTV, uh, I know you're muted. Or do you want to say anything, or anybody else want to say anything, or are we done with this topic? We're good. I'm ready to talk I'm about just glad that the U.S. with all its evil profit incentives and everything, you know, managed to develop a lot of these vaccines that are going out to the world right now. And, uh, yeah, I think that's really cool. Keep it up. Okay. Keep up the bright work, Looks, evil pharmaceuticals. Okay. Is, okay, we're going to do quick ending statements, uh, go around the room, and then we'll go into the last topic. Okay. Uh, Heem, we're going to start with you. Because okay. we know uh, yeah, why. So I think, I'm keep it under a minute. Yeah, I think my stance has been pretty clear. Uh, I, I fucking want the vaccine to be given to the as many people as possible. But I think 
it's not important to just get vaccines. Oh, it's don't worry. I'm going to hit it. Vaccines that are safe. Uh, I don't want to cut any sort of um, corners when it comes to safety. And I don't see how waving the IP would like tomorrow. Today, we wave the IP. Tomorrow, we 10x our manufacturing or anything of the sort. I don't see how it would improve or increase the speed anyway. And it seems to be the case. And, and, and we never really got to discussing this that every factory that has the capability of producing the vaccine is getting licensed the vaccine. I don't understand why uh, people think that like, I don't know, I guess I just don't understand why the pharma corps wouldn't want to be first to market in every single country. It's not like there's a monopoly on the vaccine and only one company is creating it. There's a competition right now with multiple different okay. companies why trying to, to race there? to get be the first one so they can, like you said, make the most money. I don't think that's a, that, that, that there's anything wrong with that. And I don't think that publicly funded uh, uh, medicine, just like research, I, I'm for universal healthcare, but I don't think publicly funded uh, pharmaceuticals is necessarily going to work ever. Okay. And that's my that's my closing statement. Dim Mama. Sure. Um, well, I'm I'm really actually very pleased with how this topic went because um, by the end of it, everybody agreed with basically literally exactly what I said at the beginning. Um, which is that we should help as much as we can. Um, uh, I don't really know. I can go back and forth on the IP thing. That's neither here nor there. We should do what we can to help. And I do believe that taking a proactive approach towards this will help us fight against um, future uh, future pandemics in the future. You know, maybe maybe you're maybe Heem is right. Maybe if we didn't pat, uh, you know, maybe if we didn't you know, unpatent the polio vaccine, we'd be in a perfect position right now too. But there's always the possibility that somebody scoops up that patent and is really malicious with it. I don't think we should have a profit incentive involved in something where the global health incentive is at potential opposites to the, to the, to the, uh, profit incentive. We should just get the profit incentive out of it and focus on the thing that matters, which is the global health incentive. And the way that you do that is by offering aid, being uh, being communicative, getting as many experts as we can, like the ingenious people in Russia who invented a vaccine, like the ingenious German scientists who invented a vaccine, like the ingenious other scientists around the world who don't happen to be American, but also have big brains. As it turns out, you don't have to be American to be smart. So yeah, uh, let's do that. Shaved. Um, I might take a little longer than a minute. I've been incredibly quiet. Um, I, coming at this from a more like person who really hates intellectual property law and thinks it's super cringe, um, I don't think intellectual property laws are like the biggest, like even a significant barrier to like getting vaccines out around I the world. I think I killed Destiny that one. Brought up that like already there's incredible shortages in the market on labor supply as well as just like manufacturing capabilities or like um, actual machines to to make these things um and like i could see that ip laws as they are could be used to ensure equality for all of those in some regard um an alternative to that um ip law historically to me has been exclusively used to establish some pretty cringe market monopolies starting True. with like thomas edison in the film industry he was able to like go yep. so far to like hire goons to beat up other people who are infringing yep. on intellectual property rights that was done like entirely at the behest of the state so like these kind of laws inherently benefit these established market players and they Agreed. can use it to like continue their hold on the, yeah, destiny's like, not on this game tonight economy. thankfully they're not able on this game to tonight. escape that and go to california but then again they just kind of did the exact same thing edison did they established their own monopoly and everything that being said this was originally about helping india and we should true, do as Crabe. much as we can true thank um, you very much thing, at least with intellectual property laws we should spend suspend all ip around um our like Am american cable networks um, and so we can provide all of India with the like 200 plus channels of TV doctors so that they can get really good and healthy like us Americans here. Yeah. Okay. Next is going to be Eris. Um, I'm just, you know, I, same thing what I said earlier, like, I just think it's, uh, we need to help out India and we need to kind of get out of this, like, you know, my nation first concept because everything, you know, there's domino effect. True. Everything eventually affects us, True. like, uh, eventually. And also, America should help, uh, you know, its neighbor Canada a little bit, because we're also struggling. You know, not at the level India is. But, True. True. Um, yeah, we're we having should. a really hard time as well. But, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm excited for the next topic. Okay, now I'm going to throw it over to Nacho. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think America should probably help as many people as we can um, with the with the with the vaccinations uh, because I think it's in our best interest generally. I mean, we don't want this thing spreading around the globe. We have uh, two different strains already uh, popping up in India specifically. So if the question, which the original question was, should we help India? I think we should help them. But if it's like remove all the barriers around a brand new technology that we just learned how to Nobody's use there, ourselves. Uh, I think that would be uh, more dangerous than it would uh, helpful. Um, that's, that's it. I yield. Okay. Now it's going to be counterpoints. So, um, I think the main thing that I wanted to drive home was just the uh, public private balance. Uh, we do have a military industrial complex. It's oftentimes criticized. It's inefficient. It's bloated. It's wasteful, all that kind of stuff. That being said, it develops incredible technology. Um, I wouldn't mind a health industrial complex being, com uh, you know, uh, being created. I think it's uh, fucked up that Dr. Heem has to work for $4 an hour in order to develop, you know, research that ends up benefiting the globe. Um, I wish you well on that. I hope that uh, by the I time agree. you're in your 40s, you can basically buy $3,000 wine, have a $3,000 wine monthly budget because uh, you deserve Thank it. Thank you. Uh, but Health industrial complex was my main takeaway. Um, and then I just want to say efficiency isn't our only metric. Um, so there are public goods that have to be balanced against efficiency. The market is incredibly good um, at being efficient, but also the problem with efficiency is there's a lack of redundancy. Uh, one of the things that scared the shit out of me when it came to COVID uh, was basically seeing the food supply lines kind of uh, buckle for a few weeks. Um, also them talking about a meat shortage, uh, probably six months into the pandemic. Um, we need to realize that uh, redundancy and security when it comes to basic human me uh, needs might be a good thing. Um, and we shouldn't use efficiency or the market for all of the things. Um, I understand Dr. Heem's concern that if we just roll out uh, co uh, like uh, vaccines or the mRNA specifically, we could create some nasty superbugs that wipe out the planet and then maybe we get zombies or some shit. Um, I think we do need to balance that concern out and maybe not like, you know, uh, sell the M or open the mRNA vaccine to a meth lab in the Philippines. Um, but that being said, I do think we need to uh, basically consider like the global impact of deadly diseases and how we attack it as a global community because since we are in a global economy, any disease that fucks over vast markets like India or China uh, ultimately fuck us as well. Also, uh, when it comes to this topic in particular, America first, fuck Canada, except for Lehman and Eris. Yield. Wait, I'm Canadian too. And Dr. Heemed. Uh, every other Canadian can suck it. Okay, thanks. Destiny? Um, yeah, we should obviously do what we can to help India recover from its unbelievably monumental fuck-ups, um, which is causing a whole bunch of problems around India right now, maybe around the world in the future. Um, whatever that looks like, um, if that's like shipping them more vaccines, if it's selling it to them at cost or giving them for free, um, I think it's in all of our like best interest to do what we can to help India overcome the... Do you uh, remember when course. America was the absolute fuck-up? And CTV. Damn. Interesting, interesting ending, Destiny. I think that, uh, I think that at this point, right, we should probably just look at getting India added as a state of the United States, right? Let's just put it up to a vote, have them vote to be a part of the union, and let's just kind of roll from there, right? We've got a whole lot of geopolitical things to consider in the area. We could set up some military bases right there on China's doorstep. You know, there's a lot of things that could be done, right, on U.S. soil, right? So I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe we two birds, one stone. Maybe two birds, one stone. Great. So we're going to go into the last topic which is should Twitch moderate hot tub streams? Um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. What should our policy around hot tub streams be? Is it consistent? What should we do about them? Uh, Squad W, uh, we're gonna start in the top left-hand corner with him. Okay, uh, this is a really interesting topic. Um, honestly, I, it's not something that I've, <laughs> it's definitely not something I've spent as much time on like I have with the vaccine patent. I've spent a way more time uh, digging into the nitty gritty of that, but I will say just and I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's answers. Maybe I'll shift my position. My initial position is that either Twitch has to get rid of the just chatting section altogether and force everyone to play games. Or if you're going to have a just chatting section, you kind of are opening the Pandora's box to all kinds of uh, things. I think as long as um, people are not like showing titty like nipple or like anything crazy like that. I really don't see how you can draw a line and, and judge it. Also, the people who watch those streams typically are not going to be watching my streams anyways. I don't feel like we're in any sort of competition. So good for them. Make racks. With racks. Demon Mama? <laughs> So I did a lot of um, I did a lot of uh, of research in preparation for this topic, and I I have to say um, 
there is truth in the idea, at least as far as I can tell, that there's not a whole lot of overlap between these channels and other channels on Twitch, which perhaps that's its own its own problem in and of itself. But there there's been a lot of talk about the hot tub meta and all of this, all of these problems. I, honestly, uh, I would really hope they don't get rid of the just chatting um, segment. That would be very sad. That's one of my concerns. I think that just chatting is fantastic um, and has brought a lot of attention um, to the platform. There are some issues, I think, um, but a lot of those come, to, in my mind, uh, as a result of the TOS being very, very unclear um, and clarifying or or at least making uh, more structured the TOS would probably help with most of the issues. Um, with regard to analytics, like the number one largest hot tub uh, streamer um, is, is like not even on the top 100 list by view by like average view count um by some metrics um like usually uh uh what are they called um compounded metrics based on all uh like follower count gain new followers etc cetera, etc cetera. amaranth is like 42nd on the list of the top 100 uh streams that are on the rise but that's completely varies from site to site based on how they choose to compound their analytics what, what i'm basically saying is there's not really a major threat to anybody with this and while some people might be irked by it or whatever i don't really think it's like a major threat i think the biggest issue is that uh twitch just needs to uh, refine and clarify their TOS. And I would say this in multiple aspects, by the way, not just with regard to their policies on nudity and clothing, but also with regard to their um, hate speech policies, with regard to their, um, you know, v violent and, and, and protest coverage. There's a lot of uh, policies on the site that are really unclear, and it leads to a very unfair feeling uh, enforcement situation on Twitch, in my opinion. Shaved? Um, I don't want to say that nobody actually gives a fuck about them being hot tub streams, but I, I mean, there is some concern for it and care for it, but ultimately it's exactly as it's already laid out. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier with Facebook, at least these are, we, we are still in our technological infancy when it comes to the internet. We've made a lot of progress, but when it comes to governing a, what is essentially a stateless society of a couple million people online, we haven't like quite developed the right amount of moderation systems when it comes to like what we qualitatively judge. Um, I think largely Twitch um, needs to move to like a more public and codified moderation system where they can make public rulings and like point to evidence. It's in the been past there for a while. Why they chose things or the otherwise. Um, and like maybe even have users like input on it in some degree. I don't know. Um, I think that might lead to more brigading and whatnot, but um, yeah, I think the only other concern that could come up is like um, it being what is essentially soft core porn and accessible to like other uh, individuals on the site who aren't of age and might not be uh, like shouldn't be seeing that content or having easy access to that content. But I think we take a lot of steps to minimize that anyway. Um, and we could do more. Yeah. Eris? Um, okay, just one second. Okay, so I'm actually a hot tub streamer, right? <laughs> um, I knew it, but, I knew it. Uh, I think just in general, it, the issue is not like the hot tub, right? Um, the issue is, um, you know, the reason why people are using the hot tub, which is to get around Twitch's rules. Um, you know, being and be sexual, which like being sexual. And like, we all know that people are breaking the rules. Like we all know that, you know, the content is sexualized, many. like whatsoever. Um, I mean, I, I'm not technically, even though I'm, you know, right now I'm in a hot tub, I wouldn't be counted as being a hot tub streamer because I'm not like, you know, in a, in a bikini. So what people really have a problem with are women in bikinis. Um, the, and while I can understand the feminist arguments about that, I also understand the consequences of um, what amounts to basically, uh, you know, a sexualized woman's body being like the most profitable way to be a woman um, on this platform, which is true and it sucks. Hello. Um, it sucks for those of us who are Hello, not comfortable Freddy. doing that for whatever reason. Um, and I'm sorry, my audience likes bouncing the ball in my hot tub. Um, but, uh, and 
therapist needs to start realizing like what kind of content they want to support on their stream uh, like on their platform in general right now it really feels um like they don't mind profiting off of like sexual stuff they don't mind profiting off of um uh you know death threats or toxicity or streamers being incredibly cruel to one another like there's so many problems in general um on twitch and i just wish that they were more strict in general but it is a uh, kind of like a family you know, it's supposed to be family friendly, it's supposed to be available to kids. And there is like an issue initially when I first I was first like totally fine. I love with, the ball, you know, the hot tub streamers and everything. Um, but then when I started looking into it, and I looked into like the the people I'm who go sure, into the hot tub streams, like they don't actually go into anyone else's streams. It's very rare. Um, they're not actually moving into so it's not like they're increasing viewership for everyone else. Um, and I, need a I, ball, I feel like yeah. that's actually this kind summer. Of a bad this thing. summer, I'll get one. Um, I'll get I think a real one. One of the one. biggest arguments, like people like Gamer had had, was that she was bringing in new people, and then new people would come in and then move over to everyone else's streams too. And it was just like an overall kind of good for bringing more, um, more audience, more of a, an audience to it. Uh, and it just in general, like I know it's kind of being kind of framed as like this women's rights thing. Uh, women can do whatever they're what they want with their bodies and all that stuff. But you have to understand that, like in a community, I. It's a Twitch is a community and anyone's actions have consequences to the overall community. So if like it becomes super profitable um, to be wearing a bikini that and, you know, you're a woman who is not comfortable doing that for whatever reason, um, you're you're actually still it's not as simple as saying, oh, like, just do whatever you want with your body. It's like that person's kind of being kind of pressured you know there's a huge financial incentive um especially in this competitive atmosphere to you know show much more skin than they're comfortable with and all that stuff um so i do think in general it affects community and i don't think it could just be dismissed as simply oh like you're just being sexist you're telling women what they can and can't do with their bodies um because it does affect you know not like other women as well um it's just like a much more complex issue yeah, that's it okay i'm gonna throw it over to american nacho So I, I think uh, for me, it's more like I, I don't really care. I don't have anything against uh, women doing what they want to do with their bodies. But uh, fuck hot tub streamers only because they're, they're uh, messing with our platform. Okay, so it's like it's not like uh, morally. It's more like if I got to like run a spot at the, at the local mall or whatever, or like the flea market, whatever it is. And I go rent a, a space there, right? And I'm doing business out of there. And like two doors down, uh, a, a a strip club moves in, and they they're gonna like host a couple strippers there, right? Because it's no secret that that these uh, these streams are meant to be a link to their OnlyFans, right? Okay, so let's not pretend. So they move in next door, and then I I go and I I'm trying to give up my business card to people, and I'm like, hey, yeah, we're located. My business personally. located down here in this mall, or I think that's a very bad market. take. And they're like, oh, you mean the one with the strippers in it? It's more what it is to me. I don't really care how you make weird. your money. This is America. Like my the, the libertarian in me is like fuck it, do what you want. But the fact that like I'm trying to like uh, like do my thing on this platform, and this is where out to promote their OnlyFans. Like I'm gonna talk about this one. Like, dirty, I guess to me. It's like I have to tell my mom like, hey, yeah, come check me out on Twitch. And then when she makes a new account on a brand new account my when i had to set up my wife or her brand new account for her to start streaming these are the top promoted like three hot tub streamers in a row like at the top of the page okay and whether you click 18 and up or not before you're even logged in if you log out of twitch like these are the things that come up in the top so pretty much it for me i yield i think they recommend it based on your past viewings <laughs> i'm gonna if throw it not, over to if you're not logged in I think that uh, I think that this is probably going to be a similar argument to what we were having earlier, and it's already been hit the nail on the head with regards to moderation. Yeah, I've never seen it either. It's not being very consistent, right? And it's just, you know, these attempts are obviously to skirt rules. So, with all this, all this in mind, right? We're actually we just got through running a poll over here in the Wolf's Den, right? And it's confirmed, right? The pack wants to see CTV in a speedo. I have no idea why, right? But the pack wants to see CTV in a speedo. So apparently, we're going to be doing some hot tub streams and some poolside streams, right? And uh, and and that's just you know we're just going to be doing it, right? I don't know. 
I don't know. I think that if the moderation was more consistent, then an idea like that would just obviously be laughed at completely. But since there's other people obviously doing it, it's like, well, it's like it's silly, but fucking go for it, right? So that's where the moderation not being consistent creates that dynamic. And uh, I don't know. We'll just kind of see where it goes, I guess. Okay. I'm going to throw it over to CounterPoints. Yeah, so uh, I definitely want Twitch to moderate this activity. Um, I think they should move it to an NSFW uh, category. That way, P- and I think it also should be restricted to 18 and up. It should be treated as softcore porn. I don't think it should necessarily be booted from the platform. If this is a, you know, uh, whatever, if this is how they make their money, that's cool. Um, you know, I love Tiggle Biddies as well. So that's sweet. Um, I just don't want, like, if my kid was 14 logging into Twitch, okay, cool. Thank uh, you, watching Ziggy. his favorite, uh, you know, uh, streamer, Destiny in his 50s um you know then uh you know 20 years from now because my son is three um so basically if that were to happen um i would be concerned if the first thing that he uh caught was uh hot tub titty streamers riding bananas um and then basically acting like they weren't being sexual who did that being said i do want this moderation in nsfw category to be uh done maybe in about 60 to 90 days um i'm currently at six and a half thousand subscribers on youtube uh once i break 10k uh ctv and i and all of the right wing uh, people who will join me uh we are gonna buy either speedos or short shorts and uh, we are going to do a group conservative hot tub stream where you get to see our sweet dad bods and our banana hammocks. So once we do my inaugural Twitch stream, go for uh, it. That's very sexual. Hell yeah! Uh, then we can create the NSFW uh, category, and then uh, then they could be you know moved to their own category still Sick. on the program, but age. Uh, now age we condition. support dad bods here. Destiny. Um, yeah, I think I agree. I think, uh, like, make a softcore porn category and then put it there. Um, there needs to be, like, a separate category so that advertisers aren't scared off from the platform, although just having that not safe for work associated with it, that might be enough to do it. Um, but, like, I mean, obviously, I, I don't think that pornographic content belongs on Twitch. Um, I love pornographic content. I just don't know if it's appropriate to, like, intermingle everything. And, I mean, that's clearly what's happening here, so. Okay. Uh, Heem, do you yeah. do you feel like a lot of people want to take it off? Take it freely. Okay, so there's a couple. It's the, the thing about sexualization is that it's kind of like a vague term, I guess. I have a beard cam on my stream. Okay, I literally have a cam that points to my beard, and sometimes I brush it. Is that sexualized content? Maybe. Can I ask? Can I wait? Can I ask a question for everybody on this panel yeah. in regards to that? Wait, wait. I have a, I have a really big question. Does anybody okay. here agree? Wait, wait, what? wait, wait. Heem, are you okay with them doing that? You yeah, in the middle it's of about show? it's okay. about what you just said. Okay. Sure, go ahead. Does everybody here agree? I want to see a raise of hands. Who agrees that it's kind of blurry to figure out like what sexualized content is in regards to some of these hot tub streams? Can you can I see a show of hands yeah. for who thinks that? Okay. All of these people that have their hands up right now, keep them up, get them up there. Could you please keep your hand up if you would be comfortable if a 13 year old were to come onto Twitch and do an Amaranth bikini hot tub stream? No. But I can't. Uh, okay, like, so like that—that's the issue. I, so I guess Demon Mom would be okay with literal children coming onto the platform and like riding around. And, like, I don't know enough about Amaranth to say if that but, particular um, content. Cre- I feel like why that's. Why did you keep your hand up? Wait, what? Wait, Neither I said. Were you saying do? I was waiting doing. for a response. I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying come onto Twitch and do a stream where you are riding a banana as a 13-year-old in a scanty bikini where you can see tons of cleavage and tons of booty. 13 year old booty in this yeah. circumstance and, and yes so yeah, I, think I do that's think that would be so pretty so sus the, re- the, yeah. the reason why i bring this up as an analogy because i keep getting this weird argument where people are like lying to either themselves or anyone else They're like oh well it's not sexual content it's like okay if it's not sexual content then we should have no problems with like a 13 year old coming on a twitch doing the exact same thing that amaranth or indie fox does no right? it is it is sexualized content for sure i think we can all agree it's just oh, that, like where exactly do you draw the line do you draw the line if a, sh- a girl is showing cleavage do you mm, wherever you, you draw compare, the line so hang on what, how do you compare how do you compare like uh, a good looking uh person to not a good looking person like it, it just becomes so vague it's but okay I mean, like wait but courts, you, could, you could flip this around the same way right like there's a lot of ways that you could make something that would probably seem pretty weird if it was like a 13 year old like for example if like if somebody on on uh if, if, if some like dude on on twitch who's like really ripped uh tore off his shirt and this is allowed by tos right now and just started doing a fucking dance like just shirtless ripped as fuck just doing a fucking dance you know what i mean just a dance that maybe is like vaguely sexual and then you said well why don't we put a, a 13 year old and have a 13 year old peel off his shirt and start to okay it starts getting really weird there are a lot of things that so if- I, I i don't know if this is just me and me not being a pedophile but i would also be really weird seeing topless 13 year olds even if they were little yeah. boys dancing on yeah but that's oh, yeah. yeah i agree might, wait now, but i, I agree admit, with I'm you a father so maybe i'm a little bit biased there but the idea of like my son in three years coming onto twitch and dancing topless 
that sounds really fucking weird. To right, me. So I don't right. know how they're supposed wait, to be an example. Wait, wait, wait. Like, it's so uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not arguing against you, Destiny. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Well, but like you, you, you just got... did. Are you? No, said no, no. It was I, I agreed with you. I'm, I'm, I'm augmenting your point by saying that we have a thing that is currently allowed in Apparently, TOS. You didn't agree with the augmentation. Wait, wait, wait. Well, that's fine. I, nobody asked you. Who asked? Any askers? No. Um, I just told you that I didn't. Yeah. I didn't require. Nobody, nobody you asked you. No, nobody asked you. Nobody asked you. Nobody asked you. That's how that. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. All right, now, uh, like, I agree you with continue. you. Wait, I agree with you that, like, there are issues with, like, sexualized content like this, but I think that there are, like, there, this is a deeper problem that goes deeper into the TOS because, like I said, like, even if it, even if we agreed that, like, okay, the hot tub shit is, um, is, like, too much, we have other rules that are currently in existence that would permit content that you yourself just said that you would be irked out by so how do you build a rule that says you know maybe 13 year olds shouldn't be taking their shirts off and dancing in front of uh a camera but also you do you see what i'm saying like there's no, so like in yeah, the US i'm course, not disagreeing like, with call, you in, yeah. in the u.s courts to call this we'll know it when we see it like i mean like it might be the case that down the road we run into some like very like on the line cases where you have a 14 year old girl that wants to do like a just dance stream and it's like, uh, I don't know, but we are like so far over that line. It's not even a conversation that's worth entertaining right now. Like right yeah. now on Twitch, we have softcore porn and I think that we need to like do something better to address it. And like the weird, like kind of tone police and it's like, well, you know, what if in the future, what if there's a 14 year old and they just happen to have really big boobs and they want to dance one time on stream and maybe they love like, okay, like, yeah, I agree that in the future, maybe there are like going to be some edge cases where it's kind of but we already do that with any tos like you always have to make these kinds of value statements like what counts as like radical speech or what counts as a terrorist threat or what counts as a blah 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 like you're not gonna have a hard line on literally anything sexual That's content the... is no different can i ask you a question what do you, how do you feel about asmr streams in general and also <sighs> before so, you answer that before yeah. you answer mm -hmm. that uh a lot of people brought up that uh these these girls are using this uh as an opportunity to plug their only fans yep uh, we plug our patreons so what's the difference That's okay. the difference is that you're not supposed to plug sexual content on twitch so like for instance i can't link to my only fans on twitch but i can link to a link tree that has my only fans right like that's it's kind of like okay well that's not really like the spirit of the rule is being violated there okay yeah. sure so we don't actually have a problem with that with what like I'm asking, forget about the TOS. I'm asking, like, wh how do you feel about? Should do you think that it's okay if, like, let's say, I'm just asking, do you think it's okay for for them to plug their OnlyFans? No, I think that mixing. I don't think you should. Ha I don't think you can mix safer work and not safer work content. It's just really bad for advertising. Like every other platform, figure this out. Like Tumblr, figure this out. Um, fucking Imager, figure this out. Uh, I think. I think Imager doesn't do it. Not safer work content. Right? A like, lot of. Okay, and then yeah, if you could answer my ASMR. So the ASMR, ASMR isn't. Well, so believe it or not, Jesus, as somebody that has followed ASMR communities for so long. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm okay, not. I have, wait, ASMR, wait, hold on. Rick, wait. Like, Destiny, we might have found some common ground because I also have followed ASMR communities for a very long time. We cool, found, we probably we know found it. Heather we found Feather it. And, uh, Heather Feather and Heather Feather. Yeah. Vichy girl. Fucking uh, Sogly Galoshes, classic. This is cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, and Ephemeral Riff before he got really weird and sexist. Ooh, and, that's like, true. He did. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So the problem is that originally um, these communities were never sexual. Like ASMR was never like a sexual thing, but somehow I guess on Twitch, if you ask most people what ASMR is, they think it's like people giving like ear blow jobs or whatever. Sure. Um, I, yeah. I think if it's like very sexualized ASMR, that's probably a problem. But like generally, ASMR is a category. It's not supposed to be. It's not generally a sexual thing. It's not supposed it's, to be a sexual thing. But, but it's so hard to draw. Like then you have to have individual human beings listening to every stream to to figure out where it's sexual, where it's not. not Unless you just ban just yeah. chatting. So just it's, it's no so again, it's chatting. it's not to every stream. And again, I have to ask for like a little bit of good faith here. Like I know immediately because I still do listen to ASMR sometimes when I'm working on shit. I I do. I know immediately sure. Me too. What, within two seconds of looking at something what I'm looking at. Okay. If okay, I so open like if I open a YouTube channel and I'm getting like a girl with like a plunging neckline thing and she's like, "Hey guys, today we're gonna do like it's we're we're I'm watching like a softcore porn on, on YouTube, right? It's way right. different than like oh here's like 55 top triggers for teenagers or blah blah blah. Or here's 27 different checkout books at the library that make a certain noise when you open the pages, right? It's 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 just it's immediately noticeable as a totally different category and there is little to no ambiguity about it. Yeah, I, I, sorry, but, the, sorry, the idea that 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 it's it's difficult to like decide whether or not like a bikini streamer is sexual 
sexualized or not is is pretty uh, okay is pretty wait, wait, no, 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 wait can i respond uh, go, ahead, go ahead what destiny said yeah. so okay so right now i agree with you that I, I mean again i don't watch asmr content so i i, I maybe i mm -hmm. shouldn't weigh in on it or whatever yeah. maybe right now it's the case that asmr it's clear when it's sexual or not sexual but once they start enforcing that uh hey no more sexual asmr then you're gonna start to get some weird like you know what's they're gonna like drop it in a little bit they're gonna pull it back a little bit it'll be it'll become so much more ambiguous and then again we're back in the same place where it's hard to but moderate. that's how if but no no but th there is a difference if we're ambiguous because some girl like licks like an ear thing like one time every hour whatever sure. we're in a way different world than like uh like here is like my you know two hours of oral simulation of blowjob sounds right it's a way sure. different world and i'm okay with like the iffiness of that world versus where we're at now which is like soccer yeah. one. and it's also it's even like even with what you say it's incredibly sad to me that a lot of people Question. now seem to think that asmr is literally just like fucking like blowjob sounds and that's all it is that's kind of sad yeah no no is that what you think oh, that's what you make so it sound like when you say it when no, you're like oh okay no, 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 I, I understand. Yeah, it's not, I, I think I can. Like I think I can kind of gagging sounds and shit. Split the difference, like, I, like, like what, ASMR. Whenever it gets said, I think that it's more about sound than it is visual, right? Yeah. So it's, I think it's the visuals of things that are happening that definitely require more moderation versus like the sound, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of cases where there are uh, things that are said that if you don't have some lot. type of experience. <laughs> yeah with the thing ahead of time, then you might not understand the innuendo, right? So I, I promise you that there TV. are plenty of ways to make explicitly sexual content using only sounds that you do not have to only, you, that's not just visual. I promise you, there's an entire, TV, there's entire industries of it. But I wanna say okay. like- what, what do you hey. think when you hear? Okay. All right, okay. All right. so there are there, uh, which I don't, I don't, I don't are me, there can um, we take ASMR what? hot get, sub streamers? Get. Okay, so yes. uh, Shaves raised his hand a while ago and he never got the spoke. Speak, the spoke. I'm gonna throw it over. I mean, it, I want to read. Like, I know a little bit about advertising on websites, and you can even see with like uh, websites that allow uh, NSFW or unmoderated content. Basically, the only advertisers they can get are like other NSFW products. Yeah. Like J List on 4chan is like the most popular advertiser, and they sell like Oni holes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, or like, and it's really about two extremes. So you either have to like focus on keeping all of your content, like for a wide proportion of the population, Dylan, you joked about it when, uh, counterpoints came in here and said the word penis, which means you're going to get demonetized. Um, but like the other half of it is if you do allow NSFW content, you get some like really like the only ones that really pay money, which of course I don't buy into these. I know people who do. Um, are like insanely malicious advertisements that try and like webhook into yeah. your, your computer yep. whenever you click on them. Um, so yeah, like it's actually okay to see hot tub streamers as a threat to people's profit incentives on Twitch. Um, it could definitely hurt. I mean, we're already seeing some level of hurt in global followers and growth at large. Maybe not a lot, but I think some people will say that. But yeah, I think that that's an incredibly important point yeah and I, I just want to jump in really quickly so so rules um i understand like the fringe cases that were brought up but rules almost necessitate exceptions uh so so for instance like uh what, what is it i think somebody maybe it was like hegel or something like that said like the 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 forwarding of a thesis almost automatically guarantees its antithesis that's the same thing with a rule as soon as you create a rule there's almost a guarantee of an exception um but just because there's fuzziness around rules or fuzziness around doesn't categories mean just doesn't get mean rid you of don't them eliminate rules or categories altogether. So, so for instance, if we have a negative thing that 13 year olds now have access to softcore pornography on a regular basis, um, it seems like a lot of people get hooked into these parasocial relationships with very attractive women, um, but they're never going to get the kind of uh, positive, um, positive, like emotional or physical uh, attention that they probably actually want in real life. And it's distracting from their real uh, IRL um, attempts to build relationships. Um, then I think this needs to go into NSFW and it needs to go into an adult. That way adults are making the decisions about how they choose their time, uh, choose to spend their time and their money. Um, and that, that, that's pretty much it, but not for another 60 days, not until we have the banana hammock. Straight. But Connor, uh, the, the, the issue you brought up is an issue with all parasocial relationships. And I'm trying to capitalize on parasocial well, relationships, so see, don't talk too loud. That's the okay, that's the sorry. thing. I do think that there are <laughs> so there's a couple of different ways of of analyzing this. I think that the um, 
the parasocial one i i may maybe call me call me black pilled on this particular issue um i don't think that twitch and youtube are ever going to do anything ever to move parasociality away from their like to address parasociality on their platforms they make way too much money off of it to ever address it in fact they push it really hard they push content creators to be super parasocial as much as possible they're never going to do anything about it so but i do think there's huge issues i think one of the biggest risks of um of of like a lot of these sort of like uh, lots of different types, even even just ch some non super sexual j just chatting ones, but especially when you're acting on all of these different avenues for ex like obvious parasociality, it becomes a risk. But the fact of the matter is, this entire industry is flush with parasociality. Every single one of us is guilty of it. We're doing it literally right now, most likely. Um, it's really hard I'm to deal with. So loud. Jesus yeah. Christ. But then the, I know. The audience but, is right there. But, but I promise you that the, the audience isn't going to do anything about it because they're hooked. And guess what? Twitch isn't going to do anything about it because they're hooked too. So unfortunately, that's sticking around. We got to find better solutions to that. But with regard to the, the sexual content, like. Um, I, I do agree that it's like, it's not, it's not super clean to line these things up, but like, as it stands right now, nobody knows what you can like, well, nobody knows what you can and cannot do on Twitch. Like, it's just, if this is a, a, a longstanding critique I've had of the TOS, the TOS is very unclear. And I do think that even, even without in creating like a not safe for work segment, um, or, or section of the website, I do think that the TOS could be modified to be more clear about what type of, um, of actions and contexts are okay or not okay. Um, obviously there will always be people trying to find ways around the rules. Um, but it would be a really, it would be a serious shame if we lost just chatting and ASMR as two genuinely enjoyable and, and not, uh, you know, uh, areas of content just because of a handful of potentially problematic um, streamers and and at the end of the day like there's big risks to this I, I agree there's large there's large risk but it seems like a lot of this is a lot of the biggest risks seem to be in scaring off advertisers which seems to be like something that's going to happen one way or another at this point if there's not some action taken so I think the key action would be to refine the TOS and then see if that's able to clear things up a little bit so that maybe some of the people who are currently doing it will back down a little bit or, or refine so that they're within TOS and we want a big of a problem and if necessary, create a not safe for work segment. It's just that I'm, yeah, I'm a boomer, so I'm not on Twitch. What category are we in technically right now? Just chatting. Maybe. Just chatting. Can I ask um, a, can I ask a question? Sluts we are. <laughs> can I ask a question? So, uh, no. Like one of the problems was with uh, like the kids watching this content, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about kids? Like, there's obviously some political streams that are extremely radical. How do we feel about kids stumbling onto those streams that could potentially be even worse uh, than you know watching you know, a video? I mean, I can address this. Like, I I I think that um, like unfortunately, like a lot of the 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 arguments that stem around trying to prevent children having access to certain types of content are like most of the time they do more harm than good and 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 i say that because like i mean we all know that no no every every kid under the age of 18 under the age of 13 has played a fucking m plus game else elsewise how would we have the stereotypes about xbox live being horrible and full of children playing things they shouldn't play um children they get, they're going to get access to porn websites um and and it, it's unfortunate, but it's just a reality. And what we have to do is try and address those things to be as safe as possible without like doing ridiculous things like requiring you to upload a, a, a state ID in order to have a Twitch account. Like as, as much as like the, the goal of protecting children from certain things is very, very um, respectable. The reality is that the internet is super hyper accessible and it's really hard to clamp down on that. So it really ends up being about, um, adjusting a number of different social concerns um like for example ha uh, encouraging parents to be more involved in their kids lives and in the decisions that their kids make i know that sounds silly but we know that that's the only answer for gaming as well that if you make all these weird rules about about shit like that it starts to have very bad repercussions for other people we don't want a world where twitch is run by the likes of what's that guy's name jack thompson or whatever the crazy anti-video game guy and i'm like like i mean that guy really went hard on that sort of stuff. He was pushing all kinds of laws, like making it possible to charge parents who buy mature games for their kids. Like that's, we get to a point where it becomes ridiculous. I do agree that just, children need to be protected. Okay. 
I think that there's a, I think that there's a problem in general. Wait, okay. There was two people talking. I can't. Okay. Who who was talking there? Sorry, there I, was, was, I was. I was trying to. <laughs> yeah, VTuber Destiny. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna give it to Eris first. Who's the other person trying to talk? Actually. Okay, the Nacho. Eris the Nacho. I just I find the whole like kid friendly thing like strange because I I agree. Um. I do think Twitch needs to be like a kid friendly platform um that's obviously an important part of gaming and all that stuff um but i faced like if when i i found out that um that i had accidentally broke a tos um in one instance where i was teaching about the history of anti-semitism and i found out that you're not actually even allowed to show even in an educative kind of like environment um you're not allowed to show any kind of um, like hateful imagery or something, even if like I'm showing primary sources or something. Um, and that was like really, really frustrating because it's like very necessary when you're teaching. So even if I'm giving like um, content warnings and all that stuff, I still couldn't do that. Um, with you that I think that sometimes it can go too far, but it's just that makes it oh, all the more frustrating earlicks. when I, I see like do. when I can't teach something that I think like would be totally acceptable to be teaching like even like a seventh grader or something um like showing them you know the history of anti-semitism or something like that and but then they can just go and i can't do that but then they could just go to someone else's stream um and just see like oh you know a woman basically like half making half naked simulating but a sexual act on a banana um and like hey and it's just like, it just makes no sense to me. It just, Can, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like you get really punished, um, like, in on uh, on this platform for not sexualizing yourself. But the thing... Um, especially as a smaller creator. So, the thing is, though, that, Wait, like... You're, Nacho you're, was next, then could we go to you? Is that okay? Can I just respond quickly? I think the reason is, Eris, that you're... You didn't, even wait, you didn't even wait for an I'm answer. So you didn't even I'm wait for an I'm answer. I'm so sorry. You just I just gotta, gotta talk get anyway. <laughs> so, the reason Eris is... No, I'm not gonna... Like, oh, okay. No, I'm not going to because he didn't even okay. wait for an answer. Right, I would have said yes. Not Nacho, sure. then him. Okay. Uh, yeah. Shoes came mean, up. I'm like really minimizing your your uh, your retort there, Demon Mom. But it just really seemed like you were trying to avoid saying like put porn everywhere because they can find it. But uh, raise your kids better. Like. I... Well, I, no. Well, I think, but I mean, I, it's just like I mean, we. I, I I don't think that it's like I don't I don't know I don't think it's that like. I think that's a very reductive uh, way of interpreting my argument. I just am saying that like there has to be a balance, right? Like we all acknowledge that like hey, having a having a a check a thing that that uh, appears that pops up that says hey, this is for 18 year olds and older um is great, but they're going to hit okay all the time. So then what's the next step? Then the next step is what you have them upload a photo ID and then you have porn sites that are that are keeping uh records of people's photo IDs, some sketch like there's there it's a it's a logistical problem it's not like a, a moral issue i mean the fact of the matter is there already is porn plastered everywhere like especially if you i mean the, like in other countries that's even more so than here like uh i'm not saying that that's the the like the ideal state it's just like that's how it is and and certain aspects of that are very difficult to um to correct or adjust because if you do so you end up putting other people at risk you end up um blocking people who have a legitimate reason to access these things it's it's, it's an actual issue um and yeah uh with regard to um th there was one thing that eris said that i kind of wanted to push back on a little bit which is um i the idea of like um I, I don't think that we can really attribute like the idea of needing to sex like women needing to sexualize themselves or femme presenting people needing to sexualize themselves on just this particular thing. I don't really I don't think it's really fair to push this onto the hot tub streamers. That is an issue that goes far beyond that, and I do agree it's the case. But that's true for anyone in any field. If you are like if you are sexier with your content, people are gonna most likely like it more. Um, but I don't know that like the presence of people who are like hot tub streaming is going to hurt political streamers. Um, although I will agree that like political streamers who sex it up a bit are probably going to do better than political streamers who don't in general with a few exceptions, but that doesn't have anything to do with the presence of those streamers because I just don't think Even there's the a lot side stream right there in the speedo. Yeah. So actually one thing I will say is somebody that's been on the platform for a Wait. long time. It's for what? Can I give it to him first? Then you destiny. Is that possible? You don't have to ask me. It's your show. Do it, buddy. That's okay. right, Destiny. Heem, you should take a note from Destiny. 
Okay, continue. Listen, Destiny's been doing this for 10 years. I'm I haven't even hit one year. Give me nine more years, bro. I'll get I'll learn. Don't worry. Um, okay, so I just want to respond to Eris. Uh so Eris, I understand your frustration. I think we all understand your frustration when it comes to the uh like you can't even educate on on these things. The problem is, is that there just isn't enough people on Twitch to, to, to watch every stream. I think there's like probably fucking hundreds of thousands of uh, streams that happen every day. They don't have enough staff to go around and watch and, and check everybody's streams. There is a guy right now who is the biggest anti-COVID, anti-mask, anti-vaxxer in Canada. His name is Chris Sky. He has a Twitch channel right now where he promotes, actively promotes uh, anti-COVID, anti-vax propaganda. The other day I was watching his channel. He even dropped anti-Semitic uh, Holocaust denial. Okay, he dropped straight up Holocaust denial. I reported it. A bunch of people in my in my chat reported it. But he's still out here because like it's just very hard to. There's too many people on the platform, and like you can you even see it with partnered streamers that get Purge. banned. They don't even hear. They don't even hear. Uh, they don't even hear back from their partner. What is what is it called? Destiny, the partner thing. Account like, manager. Yeah, the account manager doesn't even respond to them as to why they've been banned until their ban is up. Like they clearly have a shortage well, of staff, and that's I think part of the reason why they're so yeah. wishy washy. Heemed, I would agree with you that it is like a, a a shortage of staff, but it's also an over reliance on automated um on automated report functions. What this does like. It's actually terrible. The way that it works right now basically encourages the worst actors to succeed. So I'll give you an example from YouTube that's not that doesn't have to do directly with Twitch. I had a video that was debunking a just blatant COVID conspiracy theory, racist, like anti-Chinese video. That video is taken down, deleted from YouTube, and I got a strike for it. Um, while the original video, my video had 100 views, the video that got that I was responding to and and debunking had 90,000 views, still up now. Even though, it, and the reason for that is that, like, those of us who, would, who who are like engaging in the arena of ideas, we usually don't go on these big report brigades, but they will report the shit out of anything, which means the automated system gets turned against people who might be doing actually good stuff. Um, and it doesn't work favorably to people who are churning out this other stuff. Same that, I mean, that's part of the reason why, um, I would guess people are actually upset about what's that. Yeah. I mean, it, but there's a good, that's what I think people like all the people who are raging After against hot tub to streamers, then count. um, yeah, all the people that are raging against hot tub streamers, I really feel like that's, that's really what in general people are upset about is like the double standard, um, that they've seen. And I well, think like if Twitch needs to do something, it's to address that double standard first. I don't um, even know if it's so I, much a and, double. Sorry, go ahead, Eris. I, I just wanted to add one yeah, more thing. Continue. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Eris, please. Finish my point. Oh. Yeah, I could care less about. Sorry, Demon. Go ahead. I'm yeah. No. Honest. All I was gonna say is like I I, I don't. I don't know that it's even a double standard so, so much as there's not even a good standard to go off of, right? Like, um, we've gotten really mixed messages. I know for a fact that like Lucid Fox was in communication at one point with a with a Twitch uh, partner support person who said that, oh, okay, certain educational context and protest footage and stuff like that is still fine, even if some hateful messages appear. Um, but then in the TOS, it says you can't use it in educational context. And I know personally people someone like chud logic for example who had their stream taken down presumably for a few seconds of of a a image that he was using to talk about the dangers of extremism which had a uh, a a nazi flag in it got his his uh channel taken down for a week and it's like so it's not even so much of a double standard as is as as much as it's just no standard or no consistency whatsoever and it is a big problem i think that refining the tos and committing like a team of people that they're actually willing to invest in would do so much to to benefit everyone involved but here's the thing i don't know if it's going to benefit twitch and amazon right like they probably make money not running running with a skeleton crew and i don't know i don't know how we i don't know how you overcome that destiny well, um well fuck now we're moved past it but the, there was a comment earlier about how like um the audiences that hot tub people bring or whatever that there aren't expectations fostered on a platform you know if i was to boot up a chatterbait stream and i were to just start talking about politics everybody on that platform i imagine probably get pretty upset because they're not there to see politics I, I think that depending on the types of people you have on the uh, platform you're going to foster certain expectations for certain types of content um, this is something that we all understand to be true um, for a lot of the older people 
here, or I don't know if there are any older people here, but there used to be a streamer on this platform called Ice Poseidon. And one of the biggest reasons why people wanted him off the platform, aside from whatever shit Twitch said, um, a lot of people don't remember this, but it's because the audience that he brought here was actually incredibly toxic. Not, not just the streamers or not just the content that they did or whatever, but it was actually like all of the new people that were coming to Twitch to watch. All of those people, anytime Ice would go offline, would all flood the other chats and people hated it. And then you have other like larger female streamers now that are starting to complain that like there's like this expectation as a female streamer um, that doesn't exist for male streamers where it's like you where's your only fans like or do you have a patreon will you do do you do cosplay like there is kind of this expectation being created that to be a large successful uh woman on twitch you need to be doing not stay forward content yeah. like i've got that i had to actually make an of link redeemable thing in the channel point so that at least that there's like a a thing so it died. happens to no, male streamers it does not too. happen to male streamers in any appreciable <laughs> i don't know what to tell you all right so every day every day people ask me for a body chat. pillow <laughs> i mean i i, I don't ask you for a body pillow ctv huh i mean i'm i i think i will have made it really once they ask me for a pillow. body pillow <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna be the bar for success. Uh, I, I, by the way, I I don't um I don't entirely disagree with you, uh, Destiny, about the um about the expectation. Um, like I just I don't know. I I think it's a little hard to 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 suss out how far that goes, right? Like I mean, for example, I mean I think a lot of people come to Twitch expecting um gameplay, and yet nonetheless, the just there's a lot of just chatting in politics communities that have been fostered on here that aren't in line with the expectations of what a lot of people came to twitch for but i would say are valuable for the platform and good and can coexist with um with uh you know gaming content without necessarily taking away from twitch's gaming vibe I, it's I, I don't know i just i do think that's a little bit of a harder spot like i i will agree with you that yes most people won't go to chatterbait to find a politics stream but that's a little bit more of a single purpose website whereas twitch has clearly shown an interest in expanding beyond just gaming i just think they need to decide and make up their mind exactly what they want to do and let us all know so that we can make decisions accordingly because as it stands right now their intentions are very unclear and all and it seems like a lot of their creators are getting whiplash both from tos issues and also from content expectations i actually got an announcement to make right now it's a perfect time to make this announcement so so the, the politics community has been infiltrated. I was sent here in order to establish the Infinity Acre Wood as the gaming league for Twitch politics streamers to be able to participate in in Halo 3, right? It, using the Master Chief Collection, because here in the forwarding future, we are going to be uh, doing it with Halo Infinite, right? So the community's infiltrated. There, there's a, a real clear way for us to be able to put to marry gaming and politics in the community and for people to be able to have a way to shit talk each other they not always have to be so toxic along political lines so this is how we we got more this after this remember show's not over show's not over something like this after this panel this show's the, not over the we got for all kinds of stuff forward, so. amen i'm happy i could break it uh counter you were you wrote you rose your hand wonderful breaking i can news. do it in closing how much longer are we running for <sighs> um fuck we could go at least 14 more minutes before i would have to wrap it up then uh yeah i'll i'll, I'll say this uh so if so my my uh, close to being done yet is uh, you'll get a hot tub stream at 10k if we break 100k i'll make a, a body pillow and uh, sell it as merch on the website so there you go okay <laughs> uh, it looks like um everybody's just about done with... <laughs> it looks like we're just about done with this topic so i'm gonna go around everybody's gonna make ending statements we're gonna wrap it up i'm gonna start with heemed in the top left hand corner are we doing out, like yeah, and the... also do your outro yeah oh okay yeah outro. so oh, and maddie i, I want to say maddie cakes was here earlier be sure to support uh her con uh, her content as well okay Heem. okay um yeah so I, I i initially said when we started this topic that this isn't something that i had thought about too much uh, i just gave you my initial point of view that i, I th th that it becomes ambiguous as to what is sexual or not I, again like, i have a beard cam on my uh, stream there's another issue saucy fox could be considered sexual like i don't know it's it just it's it's vague don't make that face destiny you should see the way people thirst about it in chat bro and uh and then the other thing i want to say though you did bring up a fucking great point that i that swayed me a little bit about like the 13 year old doing a hot tub stream uh i think like that i hadn't considered that before and that was a great point you brought up uh and yeah I, i'll have to give it some more thought and 
yeah, that's it. I, 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 and so just plugging my channel. I'm Dr. Heem Dell. I, I stream Monday to Friday, 5.30 a.m. Eastern time until 8 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, it's the only time I have to Insane. Consume. Absolutely insane. I have no it, clue why you do that. It's because I have to go to work. I, I do research at the hospital. So I, I go until 8 and Ooh, then I go at 9. People are sick and need attention. <laughs> I know. Get poggers. Man. I know, I know, I know. I got to keep grinding. But uh, yeah, we have Big a good time. Game. When when Destiny was banned, I was uh, coined as the up next upcoming Omni Liberal. Uh, so take take that for what you will. Uh, but now he's back, so he's regained his uh, position. Uh, yeah, it was really fucking fun. I had a lot of uh, fun. Uh, if anybody wants Ooh, to Destiny chat didn't like more, that one. we can uh, chat anytime. And uh, thanks for having me on, Dylan. It was a great time, and I'm glad to see you're feeling better. Where's this rumor that I'm feeling better? I mean, oh, you're, no, you're, no, you're, he looks really you know, grumpy to me right now. If you weren't, he feeling might have gotten better, sick again after I, this. I, I'm feeling. Look, look. The thing is, I am feeling not almost dead, right? Because I almost went into septic shock. So that's good. But I'm still not feeling great. I'm still feeling pretty bad, right? So it's like, I guess technically, I am feeling better, right? Yeah. Technically. Well, continue right? to feel better. How's that? Sorry, I'm sorry I uh, overspoke or whatever. Yeah, Destiny likes ASMR, overspoke. and so do I. We have, uh, okay. we have shares. Mama. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty complicated issue, but a lot of it, um, unfortunately, I, I do think falls at the feet of Twitch to be more clear about what they want from from the platform, from their, their platform and from their TOS. Um, there's a lot of issues with TOS on this platform. Um, I, I do think there is some validity to the to the argument of like you, you, of like what destiny said about about uh you'll know it when you see it i do think there's some validity to that however that requires actually having a hands-on team that can look at reports of like hey this is over the line a great example of this that we already have had unfold and not really be well resolved is the youtube just for kids videos um like there's been like a ton of of like i think there's a down the rabbit hole episode about this about these very weird kids videos that sometimes had extremely strange like sexual content in them that were being churned out by like almost by algorithm and the the, the computers just couldn't deal with them and like so, and and they never really got any people to sit down and filter through them as well. I, I do think that there needs to be um, on on the side of these companies like Twitch and like YouTube and a lot of these other broadcasting companies, a devotion to having more human eyes on it that can make decisions and that can come to nuanced decisions and that can also offer feedback on how to um, enforce and improve the TOS. Robots can't tell you where your TOS is going wrong. They can just blindly enforce TOS um, according to whatever rules you give them. And as it turns out, that's a, a really messy way of doing things on a medium like this. Oh, uh, okay, and my yeah. name is Demon Mama. Um, you can find all of my stuff at demonmama.com. Uh, forward slash live to join the chat i'll be doing q and a's and some debates and stuff after this as well as a review of uh dr heem's out heem doubts content so we uh, i've received permission we're going to be talking about that later so come on by if you I liked got, me i got brigaded i got brigaded by nazis with down votes on my youtube video don't you worry we'll we'll make sure some some constructive comments come your way all right thank you okay wonderful gonna throw it over the shave Mute. That's a great point, Shave. Well, I didn't do it the entire time until now. <laughs> um, online communities have had a horrid time combating illicit content. There's not like a lot of really good moderation tools, and the ones that are available oh, are pretty Jesus bare Christ, bones. Leah. Um, I'm sorry. That there's been huge debate over time as the internet maybe. has grown Radical over what is we'll deemed say. acceptable. Yeah, maybe. Or not. Um, a lot of these issues still might plague judgment today, such as a specific example being Reddit um, and like its old jailbait community and the upskirts and all that shit that they used to do in the Very wow. fucked. Like yeah. there are still moderators and known people who are associated with all of that still in like administrative or moderation positions on Reddit. Um, I think I mentioned earlier about like populations on the internet interacting with each other, especially between like in 2016 where you saw this massive spike in activity on like reddit 4chan and all these other communities around politics um 
these hot tub streamers are essentially just invaders to us. Um, uh, they're non gamers, they're women, they're people we hate and just jokingly. Um, but like, they probably won't be around any longer than Twitch can make money off of them. Eventually, like they're probably going to have to make some kind of ruling. And I, I mentioned earlier about like ad revenue. That didn't land. If it starts to cut into ad revenue and sponsors pull out because 13 year olds are seeing boobies, like, that they're going to like make a ruling, but right now they're making quite a bit of money off of like, I would assume. Okay. Got to throw it over to Eris. Hello. Um, Hey, I was really happy with this conversation. Like surprising. It was, uh, I, I was kind of expecting some, uh, of the typical arguments I hear about this, which is like virtue signal signaling liberal feminist takes about like, Oh, it's just their body. That's it. Like, you're just telling women what to do with their bodies. And uh, it was cool. We had a way more nuanced discussion. So that was um, that was interesting. Um, but uh, hello, I am aristocracy. Uh, you know, the good kind of aristocracy, the one spelled with an E. Um, uh, we you know, stand, my, we stand. My chat is, my, my community is the only place oh, where hey, hey, both KF lefties Logan. and righties and centrists join together to oppress the lower classes together, you know? Um, and I also run Calliopean Club, uh, which is, you know, great intellectual discord server but you should uh you should watch my streams i do mostly history streams and i do interviews um and my videos particularly my history videos where you know i talk about degenerate things like the history of cuckoldry and stuff um you know are, are really really funny so you should search me on youtube too um but yeah thanks uh thanks for having me dylan and this has been really cool i love Eris. no problem i'm gonna throw that over to american nacho everyone has a cringe take once in a while hey uh so I'm American Nacho. I stream and play video games, whatever. History? I want to touch not on the yet. last not yet. Uh, no. comment first just not to make yet. sure. Like, it's a while I, off. I, I want to address the fact that everybody backed off the hot tub uh, streaming content as soon as we, we allowed uh, the youngest person on the platform, 13-year-olds, to be allowed to do hot tub streams. Uh, I think it's bad for advertisement, for revenue, for wow. overall, like providing free content to all the viewers. Like, it, It's bad for everybody because advertisers it's a, such a stupid argument here. They're not going to want to allow us to provide. It's it's going to be harder for us to uh, provide like free content to everybody else. Um, I really just wanted to shout out uh, end this on a really wholesome note. My mom started uh, sponsoring my channel. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys where to go with that. I don't care if you follow me. My mom's a lefty, so if I lean right, you can say fuck Nacho. We're going to go follow his mom. Uh, go follow my mom on Instagram. Her at is uh, bringing spring. Okay, she's doing a hashtag 365 days of art. Her uh, website is bringingspring.com. If you use code Nacho25, you can get 25% all of your purchases. And I get a little slice of the pie too. Okay, but also a percentage of all the purchases go to Step to Hope, with is, which is a local nonprofit organization that provides shelter to and education for domestic abuse victims. Okay. So please go uh, do that. It's awesome. She's an amazing artist. Go check it out. Okay? Love you guys. Thanks for having me on. Wonderful. Yes, but when will your you debate your amazing mom? Woman. Uh, throwing it over to Counterpoints. Yeah, so no, love love being here. Super fun. Uh, Dylan, if this is the last one, we're going to have words in person. I mean, it'll probably be over beer, but it's okay. Um, so uh, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. Common spell. I highly doubt jump that. Onto YouTube, type in Counterpoints. File. Uh, you can find hey, me there. Hey, Katiqua. And then Katiqua. Uh, basically I do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm a Marine veteran of four I want to years, debate person other than Grunt, so Pogue or Pog, if you will. Um, then okay. also a law enforcement veteran of four years, three years on the road, one year Pogue. in the schools. Um, right now I'm doing a whole bunch of different stuff. I'm Bill reacting to age. Full Metal Jacket, breaking down uh, all of the uh, psychology. We got a lot. Remember, don't go anywhere. We got a lot after this. A lot of content after this. Um, Fun same, ass same shit. Thing with End of Watch, Stick around. Is excellent law enforcement Is YouTube movie. still dead? Warhammer 40,000, which is one of my passions. Um, if you're wondering what I'm painting while I'm hanging out with you guys, I'm actually painting Warhammer 40,000 miniatures. I point, uh, I post those to my Twitter, which is Connor Points, C O N O R P O I N T S, C O N O R P O I N T S. Um, I also post memes there. Right, but okay, YouTube in general, is fine. I just love yelling at people. Uh, about you, politics oh, this, on the, the analytics are just busted. Um, and that's me. Okay. So I had a beautiful conversation. Uh, you should also follow all these wonderful people oh, and uh, bully okay, Dylan good. to keep the hippy dippy. Uh, it's continue. just the analytics in are not coming paints. in right now. Spin your paints. Two thin coats. <laughs> Turn it over to CTV. Okay. Yeah, so the. Yeah, uh, give us a clip, Center uh, Spiral. has been pretty good. I think that the bottom ball of it is uh, moderation. 
uh, even back to the very first thing that we talked about with regard to censoring on Facebook, right? Like the conversation between publisher and platform. Yeah, 536 likes. I know. We've had a lot of people today. Kind of feel doing like great. it's the best way for corporations We've to We've gotten 500 average today. Focus on it's their amazing. user interface, which would help with moderation. Subscribe and, if you're not subscribed you know, so that would just to the YouTube channel. The the we do shorts. Uh, as far we as anything else is concerned, segments, I am all kinds of stuff. Veteran. Find me at on Twitch under the same name. You can go to criticallythinkingveteran.com. Um, over to our Discord, which is the Infinity Yeager Wood, where we host Halo tournaments and, and a, a large community that involves a university, a chapel, a coliseum where we actually fight, uh, and kind of other people did occupy the space. No, that was the joke uh, from they were saying. Is in fact it be. It's only fair to say that it's been one hell of a ride. And uh I've enjoyed being here a part of it every single time that I have. Wonderful. Okay. Uh we're gonna throw it over to Destiny now. Hi, I'm Destiny. Um twitch.tv slash destiny, youtube.com slash destiny. It's been fun being here. Um I love you, Dylan. Good luck. That's all I got. What do you mean, good luck? Good luck at what? Oh, at the rest of your life, I guess. You're leaving the hippy dippy. You're probably going to fade into obscurity as a streamer. You're not going to be doing this anymore for income. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck no, yeah. what else you're be doing. Bully. Damn. Bully him harder. Bully him back into his job. Look, <laughs> I, if, I, if you want me to be compl bluntly honest, mm -hmm. I love hippy dippy. I'm still going to do championship. This is the thing mm -hmm. is, I just hate everyone involved. And what I mean by that is, like, the guests. True. I understand. Do you want me to, um, on my site, because um, I know you can't do it as easily. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> do, you, do you want me to change your name right now to uh, Mindwaves 2.0, or do you want to wait a little bit? Don't. Oh, don't do that. Look. <laughs> ah, look there we I, go. Just, I, I work on these long-term projects, and the worst thing I can ever get from somebody, and this has happened more often from, like, bigger content, is the maybe. Because then I'm in the position of, like, of a no and a yes, I know what to do. If I get a no, okay, I gotta reroute, do this new thing. If I get a yes, okay, let's work, continue on the project. Maybe you're in this limbo where you're trying to kind of like make a show happen, but they just won't respond to you. And I've had to deal with that a lot recently with a certain thing I've been trying to get done. And that's on top of last second cancellations, people like last second saying, oh, I gotta leave early. And, and this, this is actually happening... like, if the scheduling is actually a problem for you, you just gotta do the tried and true, my dude. Dude, message what? summit just lie about your other guests if you message me and say some shit like hey do you want to do hippie dippy on friday like lauren seven's gonna be there i'll say yes you can probably also get some other really big figures to say yes and by the time everybody shows up even for like oh lauren southern cancel you're gonna have other big figures that agree and then that feels there. like it'll end up like Firefest one day like you'll like everybody will cancel last second once <laughs> i can't like deliver on anything and then i'm the one stuck with the ticket right it's okay i'll be here for you're you still week, you can lie to everyone yeah, and then you have to get people like me listen having me on Wonderful. i'll be like it's not show it's excellent yeah, it's don't, don't, don't forget look just no. test in my outro everyone protest okay chat rise up dude yeah this is i forgot to chill for myself everyone rise up and demand that we continue the hippy dippy podcast okay i'll show up every fucking friday dylan all right i i i under i i under i understand that is just that it's very, uh, it's just very stressful because I had to deal with all this happening at the same time that I almost go into like septic shock, right? And I have to go to the hospital at the same time with finals and I'm dealing with all of that. And as that's happening, people are like, damn, I'm so sorry that you're going through like the septic shock and you're with all this going on in your life. Anyway, I got to cancel. You have a nice day. Like that's the fucking type of shit <laughs> of messages I'm getting, right? Like that, that type of just cold blooded, I don't care. Is like the type of stuff that's like okay. This then, is where like, why I don't even bother. We we got a lot to fact, talk about after right, this. Let me tell you the one thing that I know for a fact you didn't think this week. Doubt in your mind after I told you that I was going to be there, whether or not I was going to be there. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, and hey, inviting me guaranteed that, that Destiny would show up. Can you just up. be Mike from PA? I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not okay. And, hey, and PA he can't he even made stay you on without quitting. Right, like right in the middle of a leash. He made you a fucking leash, friend. He did make me a leash, yeah. yeah. Or a dog. Anyway. Hey, Destiny. I'm gonna send... 
Destiny, unironically, right. let's have a conversation about ASMR sometime. I have a feeling we could have a fucking awesome conversation. And and you know you what? Know what? There I would be some have a peace. Great conversation. That's possible, but I still fucking hate you as a human. Oh, I know you do. Oh, trust me, everyone in the world knows that, Destiny. You've made that abundantly clear. <laughs> All right, just making sure. Okay. Yeah. So. I'm gonna go probably pass out in the middle of my room now, so I'm gonna pass you all, uh, bid you all adieu. Thank I you very actually much for coming. didn't know that, Destiny. I didn't know you didn't like Demon Mama like that, but now I know. Yeah, they used to date oh, back in high school. Well, Demon Mama just lied. Everybody Lord. didn't fucking know, right? Over oh, here making false claims again. Lion Demon Mama. Lion oh, Demon yeah. Mama. True. Uh, See y'all later, everyone. I'm happy to do it on my show. See we're doing a rock band yeah. party, okay? Right. Come fucking join the after party. Bye. I love all you guys. Hey, chat. All right, everybody. All right. Lion Mama. Lion Mama. Listen. Listen. I pulled that. Listen. I killed that panel. That panel. Whoo. You know I brought the content today. Oh, I brought the content today. You know it. Now.